Warwick, Pennsylvania, close by the PPNL nuclear power plant. Middletown, Pennsylvania, not too far from the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant. Both towns with high school football teams that can generate some high power too. The Berwick Bulldogs, undefeated in 13 games. Winners of the Eastern Conference Class 1 Championship with a 42-14 win over Pottsville last week. The latest in a season of lopsided victories where the Dogs averaged almost 38 points per game. The team's big gun, quarterback Jake Kelchner, a top college prospect. The Middletown Blue Raiders, they've won 12 of 13 games, taking the District 3 AAA title last week with a 33-6 win over Mannheim Central. This was supposed to be a rebuilding year for the Blue Raiders, but they didn't listen to any of that preseason talk, literally running their way to the state playoffs. Call it the Power Plant Bowl, the Nuke Bowl, or the Reactor Bowl. Berwick and Middletown cross wires today for the state AAA Eastern Championship. For the loser, it'll be a short circuit end of the season. For the winner, a trip down the line to the state championship next week. Now, live on WNEP, the state AAA Eastern Championship, the Berwick Bulldogs versus the Middletown Blue Raiders. Let's go live to Bethlehem Stadium and Paul Olis. Hello, everybody. They call it the Christmas City, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. But in all effect, today it's been considered the football capital as we get set for the PIAA AAA semifinal football championship. Today, the Berwick Bulldogs take on the Blue Raiders of Middletown. And Joe Zone, a lot has been said, a lot written about both these teams. What about the Berwick Bulldogs? Well, Berwick, as you know, they are perfect, 13-0. They have rolled through the Wyoming Valley Conference. Their first team defense with all the starters, they've given up two touchdowns in 13 games. So the defense is tough. On offense, big play people. The quarterback, Jake Keltzer, he's thrown for over 1,000 yards. He can run. He's got 600 yards on the ground. He likes to go to Lance Avina, the big wide receiver, who's caught 14 touchdown passes. And in the backfield, Dante. Frank. He's rushed for 1,100 yards. So Berwick, as you can see, gets it done offensively. They may be a little smaller than Middletown, but they're quick, they're tough, and this, we think, will be Berwick's toughest test. On the other hand, Middletown is a no-fancy frill team. They possess a run-oriented attack. They have two running backs, both have rushed for 1,000 yards. Scott Souders is the fullback. He's Mr. Inside. Scott Eberly is Mr. Outside. He'll run around you and over you. So their average line 225 pounds on the offense. So that's Middletown. Now let's go down to the field. Our colleagues are there, Tim Carlson and Karen Harch. Well, thanks a lot, Paul and Joe and Karen. The first thing I want to say is it's great to have you here on such a beautiful day. It's great to be here. Proud to be part of the sports team today. And it is a gorgeous day. The sun is shining. It's shining. It's warm, but a little bit windy. And that could play a part in today's game, especially the kicking game. Absolutely, Karen. You know your stuff. That's right. That could play a part. And also the field conditions between the 30s. It's a little uh, treacherous out there today. So we'll have to see if that plays any part in a running or a passing game for both teams. Both teams do a lot of things well. So. That's the way it is down here. Now back up to Paul and Joe. Thank you very much, Tim and Karen. We'll talk to you later. Well, we're all set for this big championship game. We hope you are. We'll be back with a kickoff in a moment. The road to the Pennsylvania State Championship is brought to you by Burger King. We do it like you do it. Your local Yamaha dealers and Snow Scoop, Yamaha's newest snow vehicle. Browns in Berwick, where you can buy a brown car or truck in any color. And buy the First National Bank of Berwick, a community bank where customer service is the number one priority. There are plenty of old ways to have fun in the snow. But only one new way. Introducing Snow Scoop by Yamaha. It's fun to ride, simple to handle, and easy to afford. Buy a snow scoot before December 31st. There's no down payment and no payments for 90 days. There's the old way or the new way. Snow scoot by Yamaha. Consult your yellow pages for the Yamaha dealer nearest you. We went to Knobel's Amusement Park to ask kids what they think about Mrs. T's pierogi. Good taste. If they like potatoes, they'll like them. They're excellent. You should try them. They're the best tasting pierogies I ever had. Mrs. T's pierogies are nutritious, but what's the best thing about Mrs. T's? Mrs. T's pierogies taste good. Mrs. T's pierogies are great as a side dish or snack, but what's the best thing about Mrs. T's pierogies? Good taste. 
was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, the creatures are stirring were me and my spouse. Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap had a Hess truck and race car all ready to wrap with headlights and sidelights and taillights galore, racing stripes, running lights, and so much more, a race car so real, an engine that revs. I play all night, but it is time for bed, and so till the morning, now turn out the light. Happy holidays from Hess, and to all a good night. It's a sunlit day here at Bethlehem School District County Stadium. Ready for the PIAA, and there is the coin toss by the referee and the respective captains of the Blue Raiders. We say a sunlit day, but you saw the wind conditions there at about 20 miles per hour. But it's crisp. The fans are here, and I'm sure they're going to enjoy it. There it is. Temperature 50 degrees, Joe Zone. It's a long time since we did a championship game in 50-degree weather. Well, I'll tell you what. When you get into December and you get weather like this, it's gravy, and it's been that kind of year, and that's what we're hoping for today. The weather really will not play a factor except for the wind, which I think is actually changing position out here. Well, there you see the team captains of meeting with the uh, officials, and they will have the official coin toss. Okay, of course, step back a little, guys. Berwick Again, in there. Again, your memory. My name is Mr. Let's listen I'll be the referee for today's game. Mr. Pusheen will be your umpire. The game clock is official. Middletown's a visiting team. Berwick is a home team. Okay, we're going to reenact this. You called tails. It was a tail. You won the toss, elected to receive. Okay, Berwick, you elected to defend this goal. You put your backs up here, please. You put your backs down here. Okay, guys, come in, shake hands, have a good football game. Well, there you hear the voice of the referee, Jack Winter, the reenactment. That was the reenactment of the coin toss, and of course, the Blue Raiders have won, so it'll be Berwick. The dogs will kick it off here at Bethlehem Community Stadium. I'd say there are about 6,000 fans, and it's going to be a partisan Berwick crowd. Well, Berwick uh, has been known to bring a bunch, and they brought a bunch today, and I'm still trying to figure out this Middletown crowd. Uh, we were down there last week. Nobody was fired up. Maybe they get fired up now. Well, there's your officials, the referee, Jack Winter, the umpire, Nick Pergeen. The headlinesman is Andy Hapel, line judge Dave Speedhofer, the back judge Bruce Williams, and the field judge is Joe Zabicki. That's part of the crowd that you're looking at here at this stadium that seats 13,000 and is actually used by three different football teams here in Bethlehem. This is at Bethlehem Liberty High School. Bethlehem Freedom also uses this stadium, as well as Bethlehem Catholic, and they're in a playoff game, and we'll be telling you about that in a few moments. And all of the playoff sites today are neutral sites, so that none of the teams playing the state playoffs will have a home field advantage. And this all is right. history we're watching, Paul. First ever Pennsylvania State Playoffs. Steve Barbaretta and Chad Durr are the deep return man. And here is the kick. It'll be fielded on the fly at the 18 by Durr to the 20, the 25, to the 30, the 35. The little quarterback is over the 40-yard line and down at the 43-yard line. So a good return, Joe. Yes, Middletown will start off in great field position, marked on the 42-yard line. Now, Middletown, as we talked about at the top of the show, likes to run right at you. They've got big, strong people up front, and I suspect they will come out with the ground game. As There's you look at the, the line. offensive line. Joldis, Clouser, Warren, Strohecker, Moore, and Zuby. First and 10 for the Blue Raiders. They mark it at the 42-yard line. Chad Deere, the man who ran the football back, is the quarterback, and he hands off to the last man through, Everly. Well, there's the first big hit of the game, and I think now both teams are getting the butterflies out. But right away, Berwick shows its aggression, makes a nice defensive play to stop it for a virtually no game. Let's take a look at Middletown's backs and receivers. The quarterback, Chad Durr, the fullback, Scott Sauters. Halfback is Scott Everly. The wingback is Mike Dagan. And the split end, Todd Kleinfelder. Second down and 10 for the Middletown Blue Raiders at the 42-yard line. Takes one way, gives to Sauters, bounces off a tackler, and drifts his way over the 45 to about the 46-yard line. And that gives you an idea why Sauters got 1,000 yards rushing this year. Well, right away, they're coming out of that Berwick defensive line. There you see them, Rosbach, Donnelly, Schlusser, Henger, and Huey. They came right out and uh, taking the big kids from Middleton, Middletown on head-on to start off this game. And so far, Berwick has won the battle. Force, Coach, Toad, Silvers, Kelchner, and Avina. 
the rest of the defensive men for the Berwick Bulldogs. It is third down and seven. Big play for Chad Dare. He puts his wingman in motion. Goes back to pass, and the yellow flags are down. That'll stop the play. There are flags on the play. Penalty markers down. Looks like backfield may have been in motion a little bit too premature. We'll find out from the referee. It is against Middletown. Five yarder. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Third down. And the thing to remember here is that even though Middletown likes to run and has had a lot of success, they also pass the ball quite well. They've done very well in the air, so this third down and long situation is no surprise to them. The ball just over the 40-yard line. Third down and a long 11. Chad Deer has not thrown too many passes this year. We told you they are a run-oriented team. But let's see what happens this time. Barbaretta downfield, and Deer is rushed. And he just throws it away. Almost intercepted there by Gene Silver. Number 83, Gene Silver is trying to intercept the ball, but it'll be turned over now as the pass. And what a rush put on by the defense on the little quarterback under. Well, take a look now. And you, as, as you look at the quarterback dropping back, what happens here is Berwick has got some great coverage on the play. Nobody's open and almost picked off. They'll be punting. Fourth down. Troy Hamilton will do the punting. He's averaging 32 yards a punt. No rush. Avina and Joe Kelchner back to receive the punt and elect to leave it roll. Down around the 30-yard line, and the Bulldogs will go on the offense. First and 10 from the 30-yard line. A 29-yard punt that time by Hamilton. A little bit under his average. I would, is here. I would expect Paul to see Berwick come out and try to see if they can dominate the line of scrimmage. You look at their offensive line. Slusser, Robsock, Kachurka, DePippa, Bowman, Wudishek. These guys are a little smaller, but if Berwick's going to have success today, they're going to have to try to run the ball. Jake Kelchner, Charlie Lynn, and Frank in the eye. And now they shift out of it, and they get the off defense off. Let's see. Well, that's a Berwick trick. They do that a lot. They come out of a lot of formations. Okay, five yards from there. Dead ball, encroachment on the defense. Well, we've seen uh, Coach Curry do this quite a bit. He brings the team out in a lot of formations, and they draws them off sides. There's the Middletown defensive line. Zuby, John Moore, Boyd, and Strohecker. They play a four-man and three linebackers. Biesecker, Souders, and Moore. And the safety men, Everly, Fultz, Hamilton, and Dagan. Jake Kelchner, the quarterback, has one lone setback there, and he hands it on. Through the middle, across the 40 to the 42-yard line. That was Dave Forth. A fourth alignment, and sometimes he runs, but we didn't expect to see him in the backfield this early. Well, out they come. First play, first and five. Berwick offensive line opens up the big hole, and Berwick rushes for first down. So a couple of tricks out of the sleeve of head coach George Curry right off the bat. It's a first down at the 44-yard line of the Bulldog. Twin setbacks this time, and they'll split. Charlie Lynn is the only man in the backfield. Kelchner, 6-3. He's got the fake. Kelchner, a good runner, but he banged into a lot of Blue Raiders at the 46-yard line. They really stacked them up. Well, Middletown did not bite on the option on that one. It looked like Kelchner had planned to keep that ball all along, and uh, he stacked up with basically no gain. He may have gotten a yard on the play. Kelchner can run the ball. He's a pretty good runner. He's got... Uh, 500 yards rushing this year, so he can run, but Middletown did not bite that time. The defense stayed in there and made the play. All right, Dante Frank is into the lineup, but Charlie Lynn is up. Wide receiver that you cannot see at the bottom of your screen. They shift out again. Three wide receivers on the left. Kelsner back to pass. Looks, throws over the middle, but throws over everybody's hand and into the crowd. Well, you can be sure that that was just a bad throw because these guys have teamed up all year. They know where they're supposed to be on that play. Kelchner may be just a little bit excited. This is a big game for him. First time ever state playoffs. This kid, by the way, is being looked at by a number of Division I schools like Notre Dame, like Penn State, like Pitt. Hasn't made a decision yet, but this quarterback is a good one. Has hit for 93 passes, 1,577 yards. There you see it. Third down and seven. For the Bulldogs, their first possession of the ball game. 
Silvers in motion. Keltner back to pass. He looked. He throws. But there was a little bumping going on. And pass interference will be called. The pass play was complete, but uh, the Middletown defense a little aggressive on that one. They got there too soon. And that'll be a first down, Perwick, on the pass interference. Uh -huh. Now there's Keltner. Slips a little bit, but gets the ball in. The pass, the pass is complete, but Berwick will take the first down right there. There he is, Lance Savina, who has caught for 1,050 yards this year, passes off the arm of Jay Kelchner, has scored 14 touchdowns in the air. What a combination, Kelchner and Avina. And Joe, to think of it, these guys flip-flop positions. At one time, Avina was the quarterback, and Kelchner was the receiver. The court, Coach George Curry says no way. Kelchner has too strong of an arm. So it's a first down at the 38-yard line. Deepest penetration for the Bulldogs here in the first period with 7.37 remaining. Beautiful sunlit afternoon, but the breeze is quite gusty. Kelsner with twin setbacks, and the last man through will get the call. He struggles down the line of scrimmage. That is Dante Frank. John Moore from Middletown came in and made the first hit and really broke that play down. So Berwick has uh, taken advantage of quite a few yards downfield on penalties here in the first Amy. quarter. It'll be first and ten. We'll have the second and ten. A little bit, maybe call it ten and a half. Jake Keltner, 6'3", 195 pounds. They'll shift into a lot of formation. Looking to pass, he gives it. Look at the open field to the 30. This is Frank to the 35, the 40, to the 10, and wailed out of bounds. Inside the 10-yard line of the 8. And we're going to bring this one back a little bit. He has stepped out of bounds on the 18-yard line. That ball will come back up to him just a little bit. Now, I want you to watch the, the block here that sets this one up for the big gainer. Over on your left, he'll tie him up just long enough right there. Nice block to tie it up and watch now he'll step out of bounds right here. Referee right on top of it. First down Berwick on the 18 yard line. A misdirection play by Dante Frank, 185 pound senior that went for 21 yards and the dogs are knocking on the door. There's a break in the action here in Bethlehem. We'll be back with more championship football after this. At Browns and Berwick, we're asking you not to purchase a new or used car or truck until you see us. Why? Because we will do anything possible to put you in a new or used vehicle at a price you can afford. At Browns, you can select from the complete GM line, Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, and Cadillac. We're also your Mercedes-Benz headquarters with every model and option available. So don't make your new or used car or truck purchase until you see us at Browns and Berwick. And remember, you can buy a brown car or truck in any color. There's a surprise waiting for your kids at Burger King. What do you think it could be? Lucky a rainbow. Fireflies. And something soft and comfortable. It's the Pretenders. Four furry cats who pretend to be a dog, a duck, a mouse, and a bunny. See? It's a cat. Let's get one for Susie. No, that is a mouse. And now it transforms into a cat again. Meow. Quack, 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 quack. Pretenders. Collect all four Pretenders, $1.99 each, now at Burger King. Back to championship play. The Bulldogs with a first and ten at the Blue Raider 18-yard line thanks to a nice run by Dante Frank. We see more offensive formations in this quarter than we sometimes see all during a ball game. It is going to be fourth, number 99. Second down. Pushing his way through the line. Maybe he picks up a couple of hard-earned yards. Second down. Middletown linebackers in there that time. Scott Souders made the first hit, slowed that play down. And uh, again, a little game for Berwick, but so far, Berwick's line is controlling the line of scrimmage, especially when they go misdirection, especially when they do something a little unusual that maybe this middle tile team hasn't seen before. You got a quick look of Dennis Etsy, the head coach of the Blue Raiders on the sidelines, and there he is, George Curry, the head coach of the Berwick Bulldog. Second and eight from the 15-yard line. Jay Kelchner wants to pass, looks over the full field of receivers, but throws it over and out of the end zone. And Tended receiver there again, Lance Savina. Well, that's the second time we have seen Kelchner overthrow 
or receiver. And I guess at this stage of the game, it's better to overthrow them than underthrow them. And uh, Avina was open. But the ball was just a little bit overthrown. Third. They're down at the 15-yard line and a long seven yards. Five remaining, five minutes and 57 seconds. There is no score. Semi-final. For the winner, it's on to the championship in Hershey next Saturday. Kelsner again looking over the middle, hits his receiver at the fire. The ball is fumbled. Picked up by Frank at the 13-yard line. Well, a big break for the Bulldogs, Joe. The fumble squirted out of the receiver's hands, but picked up by Frank. Well, the interesting thing on that play is they ruled out a completion up ahead. And I'm wondering why that doesn't uh, become a first down. I guess because the Bulldogs did not lose possession. But again, and he really gets popped here. This is a first down at this point. Then the fumble after the big hit. Berwick recovers. They're looking at a fourth down. Well, you think it's field goal now? Well, I guess you try to get the points on the board right away. And Berwick is thinking field goal. All right, Tom Kinsey will be the field goal kicker. It'll be a 30-yard kick. He's kicked one this year for 27 yards. Kinsey, the kicker. Waiting for the snap. The ball is down. The sidewinder kicks, and it looks like it's going to be good. 30 yards. And the dogs lead three to nothing. Let me tell you why that's a big play, because Berwick has not been forced in the field goal formation too many times this year. So Kinsey gets them on the board with three points, and that's a big three points in a football game like this. And at an angle yet, Kinsey has tried only three field goals, so he's two for three, but the big important one is the one he made right here as the Bulldogs go out by a score of three to nothing. So Middletown now will bring their offense out on the field. They've only been out there for three offensive plays so far, and we'll see what kind of adjustments, if any, they've been able to make as this first quarter is winding down to the four-minute mark. All set for the kick, and it's going to be a short kick. Chad Durr, who fielded the last one at the 18, to the 20, to the 25, Durr to the 30, and to the 37-yard line. So he brought it back exactly to the same spot as he fielded the one to open the football game. And again, they're in that uh, territory on the field where the, where the field is really beat up. It's very hard down there today, and uh, it's, not a, it's not a nice football field to play on, especially at this time of the year when it is cold. Well, that Berwick score, nine plays, 46 yards, and a 30-yard field goal. That's the way it stands. So now it's the Blue Raiders with Durr, Souders, and Everly. Oh, what a stack up right up the middle. Scott Souders. Well, so far, the Berwick defensive people, smaller than the Middletown offensive people, have not been pushed around. They've not been intimidated. So no gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10 still at the 37-yard line. The Blue Raiders' ground game has been having tough going here, at least at the outset. There are fakes. Looks lots of time, and a scissor tackle is put on. Jason Slusser, number 76, who has had only seven tackles all year, but what a big one here. Well, again, a combination of Berwick's defense and the rush, but again, the secondary for Berwick. Jason Slusher making the the sack on the play, but the secondary, the safety people, the defensive backs covering the Middletown receivers nicely. So a loss of three, it'll be third and 13 now. Durr, this time will give to the last man through Everly, and the dog defense is just out of this world. Dwayne Coach, the linebacker, made the tackle on that little guy, number 12. The Berwick linebackers are getting into the backfield. They're actually shutting down everything that Middletown is trying to do. They've had no time to develop any kind of offensive scheme. So it'll be punt formation time. Troy Hamilton will punt. The lone back to receive is Joe Kelsner. Ooh, was it partially blocked? It was partially blocked. No interference on the onrushing lineman. 
the ball will go down at the 48-yard line. Lance Savina, number 88, came in from his safety position to make the block on the kick. He came screaming in. He was untouched, just got a piece of the football, and that'll set up Berwick in excellent field position. Now here comes Avina, far side right there, just gets a piece, just a piece enough to deflect the ball. Berwick, as I said, takes over an excellent field position. Piece of the ball and not the leg. That's the safe way to do it. We have two minutes and 30 seconds left to go in the first quarter. If you just joined us, a 30-yard field goal off the toe of Tom Kinsey has given the dogs a three to nothing lead as Jake Kelchner gets set once to work. Dante Frank, the lone man in the backfield. Everybody else split wide, left and right. Kelster looks, throws, does he have it? They will rule it what? Yes, they rule a completion to Lance Avina. I'd like to see that one again. It looked like Avina was bobbling that ball. What a great pass, too, by Kelster because Avina was fairly well covered. They'll spot it at the 34-yard line. Take a look. Now look at this throw. That's he's nice, perfect pass right there. That ball looks like it's on the ground to me. Two men on him, but uh, Kelsner threaded the needle on that one. First and ten. Back again, Kelsner. We're seeing an air game by the dogs. He's going for all the marbles to Avina. Two feet over his head, and there's Lance. A little bit disappointed. Had it been shorter, it would have been a big six. Well, it would have taken a perfect pass because two men out that time on Avina as they realize that uh, this guy is the big play breaker. Coming away from you now, there's Avina. Nice job by the Middletown defense to get over there, but a perfect pass and that would have been six. So it'll bring up a second down, still at the 34 yard line. Flanker is Silvers on the right. Avina on the left. And Dante in the backfield. Silvers gives to Dante, but he's tapped in his backfield, slips and slides at the 40-yard line. Scott Strohecker is the man who stopped that play dead in the Bulldog backfield. Yeah, that time Strohecker got into the backfield, broke that play down for a loss for Berwick. And they're looking at a big third down now. Third and 16, the ball near the 40-yard line. Let's see if uh, Kelsner will wind up on this one. Well, I know who I'm trying to double cover on this play if I'm Middletown. Kelsner has completed his passes at a rate of 66%, has thrown for 21 touchdowns this year. In motion goes his brother Joe. And he's rolling to the right, looking for Kelsner, looking for Avina, but it's again overthrown over Avina's head. And it'll bring up a fourth down. Andy. Well, Curry's at the 40 yard line, Joe. Nick. He'll bring in the punting team, I presume. Three to nothing. Well, the way the Berwick defense is dominated, the strategy here is simple. Get off a nice punt, perhaps, pin them deep, and let the defense take over. All right, it's the fourth down, ready to punt. With 55 seconds left. And Joe Kelchner does the punting. Back there is Eberle at the three-yard line, and he'll go nowhere. Well, there it is, exactly what we talked about. You hope to get the good putt off, which they did. And now Middletown, which so far has had three downs in punt, three downs in punt, trapped deep in its own territory. Where's our TV man? Stay tuned following the football game today. We'll join the Louisville-Indiana basketball game. Then the second game of the doubleheader, the Fighting Irish take on Kentucky. A big afternoon of sports right here on WNEP TV 16. All right, the Blue Raiders with their backs to the wall now with 32 seconds left in the quarter. The Dogs leading three to nothing, and they'll play it straight up the middle. And the yardage rushing by the Blue Raiders has been minimal this year. They've rushed for an average of 254 points a game, but I guess not against the likes of the Berwick defense. Well, they haven't seen uh, as many, too many football teams that play like this Berwick defensive line does. And so far, the story has been to Berwick's defense dominating the line of scrimmage. Well, I don't think they'll get this play underway. There it is. It's the end of the first quarter here at Bethlehem Area School District Stadium as we're playing the PIAA AAA Semifinal Football Championship. With a score, Berwick three, Middletown nothing. We'll be back with more championship action in a moment. It's 
Christmas is for kids. Hess makes kids of you and me. A truck and race car by the tree. We all come to play from near and far. Uncle plays with all the lights. Cousin Mike sees racing stripes. And Grandma revs the motor on the car. This time of year, we all turn into kids. The Hess truck and race car, six ninety five. dollars Happy holidays from Hess. There are plenty of old ways to have fun in the snow. But only one new way. Introducing Snow Scoot by Yamaha. It's fun to ride, simple to handle, and easy to afford. Buy a Snow Scoot before December 31st. There's no down payment and no payments for 90 days. There's the old way or the new way. Snow Scoot by Yamaha. Consult your yellow pages for the Yamaha dealer nearest you. Ready for a second quarter action here at Bethlehem Community Stadium. The Bulldogs leading by a spear score of three to nothing. But the Middletown Blue Raiders at their own five yard line trying to dig themselves out of a hole. They try to go wide wide, but the defense strings themselves out, strings the play out, and it goes nowhere. Well, you know, this Berwick defense this year has given up two touchdowns, really. I'm talking about the first team defense with all the starters in there. They've given up two touchdowns. These kids do not let you get much yardage. Across that front line, Yohe, Slusser, Donnelly, Rockstock, Hager, then, right? the linebackers, Forrest and Coach, the cornerbacks, Silvers and Tope, and the safety men, Kelchner and Avina. It's third down and 11. Near the five-yard line. Durr hands off to Eberly. Tries to go wide around the left side, but you see he's double teamed there, and Dwayne Coach, number 58, spun him around and to the ground. <laughs> Uh, it'll bring on the punting team. This is the third time that they'll be punting this afternoon as they trail by a score of three to nothing. They've had the ball three times. They've run three plays and punted. This now will be the third punt. Here's Troy Hamilton's kick. Back there is Joe Kelchner. It'll bounce around. He'll field it at the 44-yard line. The little gutsy guy will try to go. Skipped over a tackler, and he's down at the 45-yard line of the Blue Raiders. Joe Kelchner, Jake's brother. Kelchner, what a football Kelchner. family. And Berwick, once again, will start off an excellent field position. They're on the other side of the 50 with three points. And, you know, actually, a lot of teams would consider this a, uh, a victory so far to only be down 3 nothing to Berwick after the first quarter. Kelchner coming in. Tight end is Woodishik. The split end is Avina. The tackles are Bowman and Slusser. The guards are Ropsock and DePippa. And the center man, ready to snap it back, is Troy Kachurka. Twin setbacks. Avina, wide to the right side. Now they'll shift out again. Joe Kelchner in the lineup. He'll fix down the middle, and he can run. But this time, he's going to be trapped in his own backfield and gang tackle at the 47-yard line by the Blue Raider defense. And again, the key man for Middletown was Souders, the middle linebacker. He shut the play down, forced Kelsey to go outside, and he really was the key man, although he did not make the tackle. So a loss on the play, it'll be second and 12. Now right, let's check it. Yep, second and 12. I'll tell you, George Curry uses a variety of personnel in his offensive line. Players constantly zigzagging in and out. Dave Force is the lone backfield man. Now, he's a lineman, but he'll play as a back, and he's blocking, and Kelchner has time. He's looking, tries to run out of the pocket, but he's leg tangled back inside the 50-yard line at the 48. Well, he had all the time he needed that time. I guess not all the time he needed, but he had a lot of time. To give credit to the Middletown secondary because, again, the Berwick defenders were covered. The Berwick receivers were covered. So the Blue Raider defense coming alive will set the offense now with a third and 18. Joe Kelsner at the bottom of your screen coming out of the lineup. Now let's see if Jake will split his receivers. He's got Woodishik and Avina on the right side. And Kelsner fakes to the man in the backfield. Hole open up the middle. Twice to the big escape. But Kelsner will go down again for another long. Mike 
Kobe, the 6'2", 192-pound defensive end, put the clampers on him. Very interesting how this is becoming a defensive football game. Middletown burned early, starting to make the adjustments, not fooled by the Berwick gimmicks, and this has become a defensive football game. Berwick now punting. Eberly is back there to receive the punt, along with Mike Dagan. Dagan will watch it. So will Eberly. And it'll roll and roll dead at the 27-yard line. Well, it's three to nothing, Berwick, with 7:57 left to go in the second quarter. We'll be back in a moment. Please hurry. My husband needs help. Hurry, please. When we got to the emergency room, I didn't think Bob was going to make it. I've never seen doctors and nurses work so fast or care so much. Thanks to them, my Bob is back home with me again. The Berwick Hospital Center, the first choice when seconds count. There's a surprise waiting for your kids at Burger King. What do you think it could be? Must be a rainbow. Fireflies. It's something soft and comfortable. It's the Pretenders. Four furry cats who pretend to be a dog, a duck, a mouse, and a bunny. See? It's a cat. Let's get one for Susie. No, that is a mouse. And now it transforms into a cat again. Meow. Pretenders. Collect all four Pretenders, $1.99 each, now at Burger King. Nothing, Berwick. We're all set to go with further action here in the second quarter. And look at Chad there. A mixed up play. And all he had to do there, Joe, is eat the ball. Well, a lot of Berwick players in on that one. Slusher was in there. Donnelly, no question now that the Berwick defense is dominating the line of scrimmage. The key here is that the Blue Raiders have had poor field position every time they started. They average actually around their 25 yard line where. Berwick was somewhere around the 48. So trying to get that good field position has been coming at a tough rate for the Blue Raiders. And I think it's about time they come out throwing. Chad Durr, Everly tries to squeak to a hole, but it's quickly closed up by three or four blue shirted dogs. Nothing so far has worked on the ground for Middletown. They've tried to go over the middle, they've tried to go outside. Nothing has worked. I think we're getting to the point in the football game where Middletown is going to have to throw the football. And Durr, in 13 games, has only thrown the ball 82 times, although he's completed it 46 for 1,060 yards. So uh, the little scampy quarterback can't throw if he wants to to his receivers, Todd Kleinfender and Mike Subi, but we haven't seen it so far. Third and 10. In motion is the wingback, Dagan. Now he's going to go to the air. Floods the right side, throws. It is complete to Todd Kleinfender. And the first completion to the 44-yard line. And that gives the Middletown fans something to cheer about here at this spacious stadium. And that is the first first down for Middletown. Let me tell you something. I'm not sure you won't see it on the replay. I'll talk about it in a moment as this is the first pass completion first down for Middletown of the game. But way over on the left of the screen on the field was number 22 Dagan wide open. And I have a feeling we're going to come back to that play later in the game. But he gives to Dagan. No, he doesn't. He fakes the ball. Yes, he does. Dagan, I'll tell you, a little fake into the backfield by Chad Durr and Dagan, the wingback. You know, this little guy, Dagan, 22, has carried the ball only at least three, maybe four times in every in one ball game. They use him sparingly. He, they try to break him out. He's he's a quick little kid, and he, they usually try to use him to make the big play. And as I said, on that last pass play, there wasn't a Berwick player within 15 yards of him. Well, Kleinfelder went down to the sidelines, but comes back in with a play. So let's see if Durr will crank up his arm on a second down and 10. The ball at the Middletown 43-yard line. He fakes and looks for the short spit. Oh, a one-handed catch by Everly. 50, 45. Everly to the 40, to the 30. Everly to the 20. One man to beat. And he's out of bounds at the 8-yard line. Well, Lance Avina saved the touchdown for Berwick. Middletown realizing they cannot move the ball on the ground. They're going to the air, and they're getting it done now. 
And this is just all one great effort here by Eberle, the one-handed catch. And this looks like he's going to beat everybody, and Avina gets in there to make the touchdown saving tackle for Berlin. So the Blue Raiders knocking on the door. First and goal to go from the nine-yard line. Berwick hangs on to a slim 3-0 lead. 50-yard pass play that was. And the handoff is through the middle, and that's Scott Souter. Souter plunges his way to about the six-yard line. Scouters has rushed for eight touchdowns this year, has a total of 54 points. So now, Joe, the defense of the Bulldogs will be tested here out of this goal, goal line stand. Well, so far they've dominated in these kinds of situations. Up close, tight, short guarded. Berwick has dominated in this situation. This is what they call the Delaware wing T formation. Chad Durr fakes to Souders. He wants to pitch, but he, he does to Everly. And Everly flips over right at the five-yard line. Well, if there are any high school teams watching this today and want to know how to defend against the option in the wing tee, that was done as perfectly as it can be done. Every player was covered on that. Every possible option was taken care of by a Berwick defender. Well, they're taking a timeout. Watch this now. Berwick, again, defends this perfectly. The quarterback is covered here and tackled. He pitches, and the outside man is also covered by three Berwick defenders. There's no way. There's no way you can make that play work. All right, we've got a 3-0 game. Berwick leading nine minutes to go. We'll be back. Mrs. T's Pierogies presents the great side dish trade-in. I had him asked. I had him asked. Boring potatoes should be stashed. Hi, Mrs. T's pierogies. Stuff the stuffing. Mrs. T's pierogies are perfect. Rice is nice, but I need some spice. I'm fed up with french fries. Mrs. T's pierogies have good taste. America's next great side dish is hiding in your grocer's freezer. No more noodles. There are plenty of old ways to have fun in the snow. Ooh. But only one new way. Introducing Snow Scoot by Yamaha. It's fun to ride, simple to handle, and easy to afford. Buy a Snow Scoot before December 31st. There's no down payment and no payments for 90 days. There's the old way or the new way. Snow Scoot by Yamaha. Consult your yellow pages for the Yamaha dealer nearest you. We started out as a little old bank. But as your needs got bigger, so did we. And we're still growing. And we want you to know that today, we can serve every single financial need that you and your family have. But we also want you to know this. We'll never get so big that you can't get close to us. The First National Bank of Berwick, a community bank where customer service is the top priority for all your financial services. Everybody at the edge of their seats here in the second quarter as the Blue Raiders of Middletown knocking on the door. A third goal at the five-yard line and Berwick trying to protect a 3 nothing lead. Chad Durr sets him down with a twin setback. Durr fakes the give to Everly. He'll try to roll it himself, looks to pass. It's complete and it's a touchdown to Sounders. Berwick played the run. They defended the run perfectly, but he dumped the ball off to Sauters. He was wide open in the end zone, coming out of the backfield, and that is the touchdown for Middletown. Six foot, 205 pounds. Scott Sauters scores his ninth touchdown of the year. Watch it here the way he did it. Now again, he's going to go left. The Berwick defense has got him covered. They figure he's going to run in, but he dumps it right there, beautifully wide open. There's the kick for the extra point. The kick is no good. So it's a six to three lead. We have a baseball score here with four minutes and 12 seconds left to go. The Blue Raiders have regained the lead by three, six to three here in the second quarter. That whole drive was made on the one big play. Now this again is the touchdown. Watch, he rolls left. They're expecting run. They've got the run covered. He dumps back. He's wide open in the end, uh, end zone. Souders for the touchdown. Berwick blocks the extra point, and so we are at 6-3 with four minutes to go. All right, let's go downstairs. Tim Carlson. 
Two things I want to mention, guys. Number one is, as far as I know, this is the first time that Berwick has trailed in a football game this season. Number two, the big sacks last time against Jake Kelcher. A couple of weeks ago, Jake had a back problem. Now, as far as I know, from what I found out, he's okay. But I don't know how long he can take that kind of pounding. We'll have to see if that makes any measure later in the game. Back up to you. Okay, thanks, Tim. Kleinfelder will boot it off. There are the two deep men, Lance Savina and Joe Kelchner. And here is Kleinfelder's kick. Kelchner at the 10-yard line. He's got some blockers in front of him. He's to the 20. He's to the 25. Spinning, twisting, turning. And Joe Kelchner, a hard man to bring down, is finally dumped at the 29-yard line. Nice return. Well, Berwick now four minutes left in this first half. See if they'll try to see if they can put together some kind of drive. They have not been able to run the ball successfully now that Middletown's defense has been able to uh, figure things out. There's Jill, little Joe. Watch how hard he's to bring down. He'll twist. He'll turn and twist some more. And finally brought down as we're ready to go for action. There's Joe Kelsner, the quarterback, second string quarterback and a junior. First and ten for the Bulldogs. Trailing for the first time in the ball game and trailing for the first time this year, and a penalty marker is down. And that, I believe, will be encroachment against Middletown. Again, Berwick with the snap. Dead the ball encroachment on the defense. Little offbeat count. Middletown kids now a little anxious. First and five for Berwick. And there you see them jump across that line of scrimmage. Scott Souter, number 31, the middle linebacker, was the man who made the move. First and five, last man through. This is Dante Frank, tries to skirt the end, but he's brought down in his own backfield by Mike Dagan, the safety man, six foot one, 165 pound senior. Wow, what a great play by Dagan. He just shoots through there and tackles him, and he was on his way to a big game. We've only got three minutes left here in this first half. Berwick. Trailing six to three, Middletown with a drive for a touchdown just a few moments ago. So it'll be still second down and five at the Berwick 35. Wide to the right side goes Lance Savina. Dave Force is the man in the backfield. Kelsner in motion. And Kelsner looks. Throws for Ravina, but off his fingertips. So sometimes you catch the hard ones and miss the easy ones, as you saw there. Well, that ball again was thrown a little bit deep. He was wide open, but it was not a good pass by Kelsner. Now here's Kelsner. He's coming at you. A little square out here. He's wide open, but that ball has turned him around a little bit. Very difficult ball to catch, especially when there's a wind blowing and your hands are chilly. So it's a big play for the Bulldogs. If they don't make it here, they'll still give the Blue Raiders some chance and probably in pretty good field position if they have to punt. Third down and a long five. 245 remaining in the half. Six to three, Middletown leading. Kelsner rolling, looking deep into the sun, throws for Avina again. Penalty marker, he was tripped. He was tripped by Scott Everly. You'll see it on the replay. Well, Scott Everly says he didn't touch him. He says he tripped over his own two feet. That'll be a big first down for Berwick. They're, now they're good. Yep, they're going to pick up the flag. There's no penalty on this. Well, let's see if he did or he didn't. Looks like he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> well, whether he did or he didn't, the he did. on the defense, automatic first down. Well, I'd like to see that one again. I don't know if he got his feet tangled. There certainly was, there was no intent on pass interference. There's no intent on the pass interference here. Now watch and see if their feet get tangled up. Well, I'll tell you, it's it didn't look like pass interference to me. The ball, smack dab in the middle of the field. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Tie moving on, 240 in the half. The handoff is to Dave Force. Force gets about five yards on the play. Now Force is six foot, 212 pounds. That's a lot of beef going through that line. He's a linebacker on defense, but he's seen quite a bit of offensive action so far this afternoon. It'll be second and five. And with only two minutes left in this first half, I still believe Berwick is going to have to complete some passes if they're going to get in the end zone. There's not enough time to run the ball down the field. Well, they did it all year. The Kelchner to Avina pass combination has worked. Let's see what happens here. Second and five at the Blue Raider 45 yard line. Kelchner hands off to Charlie Lynn, his first carry. 
Lynn tries to go around the left side, gets a couple of yards to about the 43-yard line. Charlie Lynn, six foot, 210 pounds, has a couple of touchdowns this year. Short of a first down. Nice play by the defensive end, Strohecker, turned that play inside. Out of the huddle they come now. Third down time, moving on to a minute and a half. Bulldogs trail three to nothing. Kelchner gives through the middle to force again, but you see the leg tackle there. They would not let him get through. Well, he got far enough. He got the first down on the play, and right now that's what Burr was thinking about. There's going to be another timeout called on the field. Berwick uses its first timeout in this half. WNEP TV proud to bring you a once in a lifetime event as we follow the Lock Haven University basketball team on a tour of Taiwan. Be sure not to miss this cultural mixture of basketball and goodwill. Saturday, December 17th, exclusively on WNEP TV 16. Berwick trailing with a minute 25 seconds left in the first half. 6-3 Middletown. There's been one big drive by Middletown with a great big play in that drive. Berwick has managed just a field goal, and this has become quite a defensive football game. Well, we've seen a half a dozen different offensive formations by the uh, Berwick Bulldogs, and one that Curry has up his sleeve is that tight end around when uh, Kevin Woodishick will get the ball from the fullback or the quarterback. Well, with all the formations they have come out with, I would say that after that first series, Middletown has adjusted quite nicely. They have not been fooled by those formations. The other part of this AAA game is Bradford against Aliquippa, and the winner of this game plays the winner of that one. Let's go to Tim Carlson. Let's not go to Tim Carlson because we're ready to go back to live action. All right, first and 10 at the 40-yard line. In motion, Joe Kelchner. And Jake rolling. He's a good scrambling quarterback looking for Avina. He's got it at the 25-yard line. And to the 24 goes Avina. And I'll tell you what, there was more pass interference on that play than there was on the one before that. So the Bulldogs did have time. There's still a little over a minute to go, but they're not huddling. They're going to go right to the action. First and 10 at the 24-yard line for the Bulldogs trailing 6-3. to three. A flare pass to the sideline to Avina, but he is out of bounds at the 20-yard line. So the clock is, uh, is, remains to be a big factor right now, Joe, for the Bulldogs. And even if they don't get in for the touchdown, the field goal can tie it. Well, they're getting Avina open. There's no question about it. And if Kelsner can get the ball to him, they're going to make some big plays in the second half. All right, Karen Harch, what do you got? Well, you know, who do you think fires up the team out on the field? It's the cheerleaders on the Bulldog here, right, Bulldogs? Yeah, yeah. All right, the girls never get on TV that often, so come on, give us a cheer. Ready? Woo! Give me a B! 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 Second and six. A pass into the end zone to Avina. A lot of white-shirted Blue Raiders there. No interference, and it goes just as a long, incomplete pass. Well, Avina was open on that play, but by the time the ball got there, Middletown had closed in. So now it is a third down at the 20-yard line. Again, this is a nice pass. He's open, but watch them all convert. Ooh, and that was a beautifully done defensive play by Middletown. That had six written all over it. Well, let's see now whether Coach George Curry will try to position himself a little closer in for the field goal, or will he go for the touchdown on third down at the 20-yard line? In motion. Goes Silvers to the left side, and the handoff is to... Dante, and Dante is inside the 15 to the 11. And the first down. And a timeout by Berwick. That's the, that is the second time that play has worked in this game. Little crossback right here, going against the flow. Earlier in the game, it went for a big gainer on that first Berwick scoring drive. Well, there are eight games being played around the state of Pennsylvania for the Class Quad A, Triple A, Double A, and A championship. The Chamonix playing Cedar Cliff in Quad A, and Brashner against Pittsburgh Central Catholic. The other half of this Triple A is Bradford at Aliquippa. In Double A, Bethlehem Catholic at West York. Bellwood Antis at Wilmington and in Class A. St. Pius X takes on Camp Hill. East Brady versus Cambridge Springs in there. 16 teams in action. 
10 of them, Joe, undefeated. And uh, the winners today go on next week to play for the state championships in the four classes. All right, Tim Carlson, what's down there? Well, Joe, to tell you the truth, uh, we all know the old saying that when you get down into this territory, the uh, yards get a little bit tougher. But I've seen Berwick about six or seven times this year and don't think they're going to try to blast the ball in. Look for Kelstra maybe to do some kind of a rollout and look for uh, one of his receivers in the okay, end zone or maybe even to run the ball himself. Kelstra's tried the old quarterback uh, draw, quarterback sneak. He's very good at it. He's a quick runner. Look for something like that in the last, uh, what, uh, 55 seconds of this game. Back up to you. Well, it could be a big confidence builder if they can get the score here going into the locker room with at least two scores in the ballgame, whether it be a tie or whether it be the lead via the field goal or the touchdown. First and 10 at the 12-yard line. Kelsner wants to go to the air, cocks his arm, fakes, now wants to run. He's got some room. He's to the 10. He's to the 5. Kelsner still on his feet, bangs down at the goal line. Is he in or not? He's in. Oh, my, what a great play by Kelsner. And this play is designed as a run all the way to Avena. This play is designed as a pass to Avena, but Avena is covered in the end zone, and then Kelsner just gets it all done on his own. There's a move here. There's a miss. There's another miss right there. There's another miss. And finally, just over the white line into the end zone for a touchdown. There's Jake Kelsner, 195-pound quarterback. Kinsey will try to make it 10, and he does. Kinsey's extra point makes it 10 to 3. Well, did Berwick That's answer the credit. question? Did they answer the question? Again, watch this play. Now, right here, Avina has turned around. He's, now he's going into the end zone, but he's covered nicely, and so Kelsner's just got to do it all on his own. And what a block up front there you saw by number 99, Dave Ford. That's why that guy is being recruited by all the Division I schools across the country. He can take his pick. The question is, can Berwick come from behind? The answer is yes. Nine plays, 70 yards. That series. That is a classy drive, too. Let me tell you, time running out against a good football team. They had to make some adjustments. They did. They started to get the receivers open. Kelsey started to hit the passes. That is a classy drive with time running out in the first half. All right, let's go see what happens for the rest of the 40 seconds in the ball game. In the first half. 10 to 6. And the kick. It's a sailor. It'll be fielded there by Dagan. Well, let's check that. Mike Dagan. First down. No, they've got a couple of downs, and they might just go to the airways with the remaining time of 36 seconds on the clock, deep in their own territory. I don't know if Middletown will try anything with 36 seconds left. They do have pretty good field position. They may try to throw one down the field. In the huddle, they'll spot it at the 37-yard line. Wide to the right side is Rusty Keating now. New man in the ball game. Could be a fleet-footed receiver. Chad Durr instead gives to Souders. And Souders piles his way to about the 40. And you may be right. They're elected to use up the remaining time on the clock, go into the locker rooms, and regroup for the second half. They are rushing into a play here, but I think this is more just to catch Berwick sort of surprised than they are trying to use the clock. Well, they'll go to the pass with the clock winding down to five seconds. Going long. This is Everly and out of his reach. Well, he had time to score because when the ball hit his fingers, there were two seconds left on the clock, and that's the way it stays with two seconds. Well, that was Middletown there. They fooled everybody. They came out, ran a ball off tackle, looked like they were going to run the clock out, and then sure enough, what do they do? They come out, almost complete the big play for the touchdown. They were not trying to run the clock out, folks. They were trying to fool us by letting us think they were. Well, I guess, Joe, they'll come back with another... Hail Mary type pass. Coach George Curry telling his secondary to get back and play against the pass. And this will be the last play of the first half. Illegal motion. And they'll be assessed a penalty. <laughs> Five more yards. Penalties have been going towards the gold and white clad Blue Raiders today. Two seconds. 10 to 6 in case you just joined us. Berwick led 3-0, trailed 6-3, and now lead 10 to 6. 
In motion goes Everly. And Chad Durr, with the remaining time, the rush is on, and he's going to eat the ball. What a sack there by Rollin Yohe. The defensive end pitched in, and the Bulldogs will go into the locker room with a 10-6 lead. Joe, a lot of people said this would be a low-scoring ball game. Berwick this year has scored 40 or more points in eight ball games, but I don't think they'll see that many here today. Uh, defense definitely doing the job here in the first half. Middletown had one drive, Berwick two drives, and that has been the story of the football game so far. Again, a reminder, if Berwick wins here, they will travel to Hershey, Pennsylvania, in the huge stadium there, and they'll take on the winner of the Bradford Aliquippa game. And if Berwick wins it, we'll be there with kickoff time set for 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. But there's still a second half to be played here from Bethlehem Community Stadium with a score. Berwick 10, Middleton 6. We'll be back with a halftime show after this. The Road to the Pennsylvania State Championship is brought to you by the Berwick Hospital Center, the first choice when seconds count. Mrs. T's Pierogies, America's next great side dish. And by Hess Gasoline Stations and Convenience Stores. The Hess truck's back and it's better than ever. Christmas is here. The Hess truck's back. Racer and truck and dance. So exciting. The Hess Toy Truck and Race Car, $6.95. Get yours now, because it's better than ever. The Hess Truck's back. Happy holidays from Hess. Hey, Santa, this vacation is great, but it's getting late. What are we going to do for all the sports fans on our list? And besides, what are we going to tell Mrs. Claus? Don't worry, Herbie. All we need is one sleigh stop at Mr. T's. We'll take care of all the sports fans on our list. We can get NFL jerseys for Johnny and choose from a wide selection of basketball or baseball stuff for Bobby. And if Harold wants hockey, well, Mr. T's has that too. And while we're there, we can even pick up something for Mrs. Claus. So you see, Mr. T's is your ticket to dressing like a pro and our ticket to an easier Christmas. Back here at Bethlehem Area School District Stadium with a score, Berwick leading by a slim four-point margin. 10 to 6 in an action packed, sometimes offensive show and sometimes defensive show in that first half, Joe. Well, I still think the defense has dominated the, uh, the defense has dominated that game really in the first half. Uh, really just one big drive. Here comes the Middletown touchdown after a great play earlier by Everly was the big play in the game. But then right here he throws back and there's the Middletown touchdown, which came after Berwick had had an opening drive to put three up on the board. So that's Middletown's only score. Then Berwick comes back. They've only got four minutes left in the half. They put together a big drive, and this one is finished off on the great play here by Kelsner. Again, trying to go to the end zone, covered there, and then it's all Kelsner as he gets on the board with under a minute left in the first half. And that made it 10 to 6, and that's where they are right now. And sandwich in there at 35, 30 yard field goal by Tom Kinsey. And that's the way the score stands 10 to 6. Well, Tom Tidy is back at our studio with a lot of other sports that's happening around the country today, including the big one at the vet, the Army Navy game. So let's go to Tom Tidy at WNEP. Tom? All right, Paul. Thanks a lot. And you and Joe have a great game going. Should be an exciting second half. Welcome to the state semifinal halftime show. I'm Tom Tidy. Plenty of college football to talk about today, including the Heisman hopefuls. We'll get to that in a second. But first, the exciting first half highlights of Berwick and Middletown. Great game going on right now, 10-6 at halftime. Let's pick it up in the first quarter. Jake Kelchner, plenty of defense, he hits the receiver, but he gets popped. Danny Frank comes up with the ball on the 13. Bulldogs settle for the field goal. This is Tom Kinsey, nice shot, 30-yarder. The uh, sidewinder gives Berwick the 3-0 lead. Berwick defense. All over Middletown early in this first quarter. Chris Slusser coming in, number 76. Here he comes, nails Chad Durr. He gets sacked, and Middletown didn't get a first down until the second quarter. That's when they started to get the offense going. Here's Durr to Scott Eberly. Great one-handed catch down the left sideline. He'll rumble 35 yards. The last guy before the end zone is Lance Avina. He takes him out of bounds at the eight. Then Chad Durr to Scott Souders. He'll throw behind himself right here. Nice play. Souders in for the touchdown. 
point after was blocked 6-3. Berwick uh, was losing, but then Jake Kelchner just watched this and listened to this uh, great individual effort. Piece to the five. Kelchner still on his feet. Kelchner takes the ball himself and goes in for the touchdown. Just a great individual effort, as I said, by Jake Kelchner. There's your halftime score. Berwick 10, Middletown 6. One other a state semifinal to report in on. Number two, Bethlehem Catholic going in at 12 and 0. They're from District 11. They are beating Western York, or West York, 9-0. That is at halftime, West York from District 3. We will have highlights of that tonight at 11. Well, in college football, the voting for the Heisman is complete. The winner will be announced a little bit later today. Right now, it looks like the odds-on favorite has to be Barry Sanders of Oklahoma State. Sanders having an incredible year, uh, setting 18 NCAA records. He's rushed for nearly 2,300 yards this season and needs only 47 more to break Marcus Allen's record for the most yards in a season. Barry Sanders indeed looks like a lock to win today's Heisman. Also with the shot at the award is quarterback Rodney Pete of Southern Cal. Southern Cal went to 9-2 this year, and uh, a lot of that has to go to Rodney Pete. What a great player. A couple of blocks from USC, UCLA, and uh, that's home of Troy Aikman. He was the favorite to win the uh, Heisman at the start of the season. He slacked off a little bit, but he should be right up there. Two other semifinalists are also quarterbacks. Steve Walsh of Miami and Major Harris of West Virginia round out the top five. Now, college top 20 schedule for today. Brigham Young will take on Miami, number two Miami, headed to the Orange Bowl to play Nebraska. That is at 8 o'clock tonight. Texas Tech and uh, Barry Sanders team, Oklahoma State. By the way, they're playing that game in Japan, if you're wondering why it's so late. Pittsburgh and Syracuse, great game for the East Coast. That's on ESPN. You'll be able to see that at 4.30. And the Army-Navy game is uh, just underway. That started at 2 o'clock. Well, coming up after this two-minute timeout, we'll go back down to Bethlehem for the exciting second half with Joe Zone and Paul Ellis of Berwick and Middletown in the AAA state semifinal. Stick around. At Browns and Berwick, we're asking you not to purchase a new or used car or truck until you see us. Why? Because we will do anything possible to put you in a new or used vehicle at a price you can afford. At Browns, you can select from the complete GM line, Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, and Cadillac. We're also your Mercedes-Benz headquarters with every model and option available. So don't make your new or used car or truck purchase until you see us at Browns in Berwick. And remember, you can buy a brown car or truck in any color. There's a surprise waiting for your kids at Burger King. What do you think it could be? Lucky <laughs> rainbow. Fireflies. It's something soft and comfortable. It's the Pretenders. Four furry cats who pretend to be a dog, a duck, a mouse, and a bunny. See? It's a cat. Let's get one for Susie. No, that is a mouse. And now it transforms into a cat again. Meow. Quack, 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 quack. quack. Pretenders. Collect all four Pretenders, $1.99 each, now at Burger King. Please hurry. My husband needs help. Hurry, please. When we got to the emergency room, I didn't think Bob was going to make it. I've never seen doctors and nurses work so fast or care so much. Thanks to them, my Bob is back home with me again. The Berwick Hospital Center, the first choice when seconds count. Well, it's halftime here with Berwick leading by a score of 10 to 6. Joe, and I guess the wheels are really turning in the locker room with Coach Dennis Etsy and Coach George Curry figuring out how to protect this lead and the other guy figuring out how to get ahead. I think they're going to try to figure out some ways to get the offenses going in the second half because, again, it's been a, a game really of just a couple of big plays. Basically, the game has been controlled at the line of scrimmage, so I would expect them to try to work on getting some offense in the second half. Well, we saw a lot of action on the football field, but there's also a lot of action at halftime in the stands, so let's go to our roving reporter, Karen Hart. <laughs> yes, I've been roving around, Paul. I'll tell you what, I think I have the entire student body of Berwick High School here, and they're number one. Look at this. They got me a tie. Rich Pentridge. Does that stuff come off or what? Yes, it comes off. We do it. We've been doing it for the last two weeks because we've been pumped up about Berwick football. We know all the town out there and everybody that we really love Berwick, and we know that WNEP is number one. All right, yeah. <laughs> Let's listen now to the Berwick High School marching band. They're terrific.
you how seriously they take football in Berwick. I mean, would you let your kid do this? What do your parents think? They love it. I love it too. This guy's name is Jay, and you can't help but feeling his hair because it's just unbelievable. This is BJ. These two guys are water boys. And I'll tell you, you guys do a real good job out there. What's the hardest part? Going out and getting tea. Oh, yeah? Are the guys nice to you? Yeah. Are you going to grow up and play football for Berwick High School one of these days? Yeah. Yeah. How about you? Yeah. Tell me, does this paint come off? Yeah. What are you going to do after football season? Are you going to let it grow in? Uh huh. Yeah. I don't know. I'm thinking about doing the same thing. I don't know. What do you guys think? I don't know. Um, my name is Yvonne Yoey, and I'm Berg High School cheerleader. And I have a brother, defensive end number 54, Rollin Yoey. Well, then you have a couple of reasons to cheer out there, right? Yeah, I like to cheer my brother on. He's fun. And all we hear at home is football, so. Hey, Berwick is football country, right? Hey. Right. Well, you guys are doing something, right? You're undefeated. You're here in the state playoffs. Make sure that's on TV. Everything's on TV. We have so many fans here. Yeah. And you know what? I I don't mean to be to be partial, but I think the Berwick side is a lot louder than the Middletown side. Now, I'm not taking sides, but what do you think? Louder. <laughs> And you know what they told me? They made me an honorary bulldog, so I, I guess that's a compliment. I, we'll be back with more from Bethlehem in just a moment. Stay with us. The Road to the Pennsylvania State Championship is brought to you by your local Yamaha dealers and Snow Scoop, Yamaha's newest snow vehicle. Browns in Berwick, where you can buy a brown car or truck in any color. And by the First National Bank of Berwick, a community bank where customer service is the number one priority. Went to Knoebel's Amusement Park to ask kids what they think about Mrs. T's pierogies. Good taste. If they like potatoes, they'll like them. They're excellent. You try They're the best tasting pierogies I ever had. Mrs. T's pierogies are nutritious, but what's the best thing about Mrs. T's? Mrs. T's pierogies taste good. Mrs. T's pierogies are great as a side dish or snack, but what's the best thing about Mrs. T's pierogies? Good taste. We started out as a little old bank, but as your needs got bigger, so did we. And we're still growing. And we want you to know that today, we can serve every single financial need that you and your family have. But we also want you to know this, we'll never get so big that you can't get close to us. The First National Bank of Berwick, a community bank where customer service is the top priority for all your financial services. Paul Olis, Joe Zone, Tim Carlson, Karen Hart. We're back live here at Bethlehem Community Stadium in this championship football game with the Berwick Bulldogs leading by a slim score of 10 to 6. It's an action-packed first half Joe Zone as Berwick took the 3 to nothing lead, found themselves trailing 10 to 6, but then a big play by Jay Kelsner, the quarterback, vaults them back into the lead, but not by much. Well, there's no question that this has been the toughest game for Berwick this year. And as I'm looking at the stats here, they really have pretty much dominated on offense, not that this has been an offensive struggle. They've got 57 yards rushing, 58 yards passing. That is way below their season average, even after the first half. So they've really had a tough time. But still, you look at Middletown stats, Paul, and they're lucky to be in the game if you look at the stats. Well, I'll tell you what, the uh, Middletown Blue Raiders have averaged 256 yards rushing per game in 13 games. But look at here, only 18 yards by a defense that uh, was not supposed to be that superior. 69 yards passing. They're three for five in the passing game for a total of 45 penalties. That's a big mark against the Berwick Blue Raiders as Berwick took advantage of that good field position with the penalties. Yeah, the, the 45 yards and uh, the big play in my mind was that uh, pass interference on third down. The one I did not think was pass interference, but of course I'm up here, I can't tell. But what that did was give uh, Berwick the chance to keep the drive going. They went on to score the touchdown that has them in the lead right now. So the passing yardage, uh, the penalty yardage right now definitely in favor of the uh, Berwick team. They may have much less uh, yardage. And that big number, number 88, Lance Avina. He's the key man with the passing offense, four catches, 43 yards, and right. importantly, he tipped a punt there that gave Berwick a good field position as well. Well, Tim Carlson is still back on the field. Tim, what's doing down there now? 
Well, to tell you the truth, Paul, I just wanted to make a couple observations about the first half. Number one is, as far as I know, Jake Keltner is okay, even though he uh, got racked up a couple of times on that next of the last series before they scored. The other thing I wanted to mention is, and I, I think this is a real credit to Coach Curry and the Berwick Bulldogs. As I said, that was the first time this year that I can recall, and I'm pretty sure that they were down in a football game. They came right back. Yeah, maybe they got aided by that one penalty. Uh, from down here, to tell you the truth, it looked like it might have been pass interference. But be that as it may, they punched the ball in, and they did it with authority, marching right down the field. And I think that's got to make the kids feel really good going into halftime. You know, in hockey, it seems if you score that uh, goal right before the end of the period, it seems to fire the team up, and they come out and blow the other team out uh, maybe in the, the next period. I think the same situation is uh, evident here, where Burke was able to drive 70 yards, go right down the field, and score the go-ahead touchdown. The other thing I want to mention is don't forget about that blocked extra point by Middletown. That could come into play since the score right now is 10 to 6. Back up to you. That's right. A blocked uh, extra point. Can't play a lot. At, we'll find out at the end of the ball game. Well, it's a great sports day here on WNEP-TV. Still a big second half to come. And following that, you'll see college basketball, Louisville and Indiana. That game underway will join it in progress to be followed by the Fighting Irish and Kentucky. Well, there's a lot of firsts for Berwick. They won the Wyoming Valley Conference, Joe. They won the Eastern Conference. They are 13-0. If they win here today, it'll be the first team in this area to ever win 14 games and still have a chance at 15. And boy, I think they're licking their chops now, hoping they can take on Aliquippa next Saturday at Hershey Stadium. Well, I'll tell you, you think about uh, the score right now, 10 to 6, and uh, I gotta believe Middletown feels fortunate to have six points because basically, other than the big play, the one play, and that kid did it all by himself, this has really been Berwick's football game. I think they have pretty much dominated, and uh, I would be surprised if Middletown can put too many points up in the second half. And you saw the score at halftime, uh, Bethlehem Catholic leading West York. That's in the double-A competition. And it certainly is nice. A lot of coaches waited a long time for a PIAA state playoff. They talked about it so many years, rejected it so many times. But finally, they got it down to work. Here we are, our first ever, and Berwick going for it. Well, one of the problems, of course, with the state playoff is, is how long the season is. Berwick could play 15 games this year. Personally, I think that's too long. I think next year, the state playoffs are going to be a little sooner, and some teams who have a chance at an Eastern Conference playoff are going to have to choose between either the Eastern Conference or the states because there are a lot of kids now who might be wanting to play basketball or wrestling, and they're not out for those teams because they're here playing football today. Yep. Well, they should be coming out of the shoots in a moment. Berwick Bulldogs leading by a score of 10 to 6 over the Middletown Blue Raiders, and the action should be hot and heavy. I'll tell you what, we'll be back with that kickoff of the second half, but now we'll go back to our studios. The really exciting news is that some friends and I have decided to go to Paris this summer. Concentrate on Mom. So if you get her on your side, then you can double-team Dad, and then you might have a fighting chance. <laughs> One person who stands between you and Paris. Well, what do you think he'll do? First, he's going to say, aha. And then he's going to say, hmm, interesting. Aha. Mm, interesting. What is that? I don't know. It's the new one. The Cosby Show, Monday at 7 on WNEP TV 16. On the next Pennsylvania Outdoor Live, antler deer season 88 is in full swing. We'll give you a report on how the week went. And the muskie king, Bob Drake of Scranton, lands a big muskie and gives us some tiger muskie tips to make it a December to remember. Plus, did you know that venison steaks have less cholesterol than chicken? And we'll show you why you shouldn't mistake an elk for a deer. Tomorrow at 6.30 on WNEP TV 16. Winter is here, and for many less fortunate children in our area, winter is a struggle to keep warm. That's why WNEP TV and Price Chopper Supermarkets urge you to donate coats your children no longer need in the designated Coats for Our Kids shopping carts at your Price Chopper Supermarket between November 28th and December 23rd. All of the coats will be dry cleaned and distributed by area charitable organizations, all for our kids. The Wyoming Valley Marines are asking for your help. I'm Sergeant Scott Trott, and this is Christmas. Like every Christmas, local Marines are collecting toys for the Valley's less fortunate children. Help support the Marine Corps Reserve Toys for Tots campaign. Drop off your donations of new toys at your local drop-off point. From the Marines and the children of the Wyoming Valley, 
Thank you, and Merry Christmas. WNEP salutes the Wyoming Valley Marine Corps League. For our kids, we're proud to serve. Back at Bethlehem Stadium, there you see the score. Berwick leading by a score of 10 to 6 over Middletown. We're almost ready for the kickoff of the second half, but before we do that, let's go downstairs to Karen Harch. Paul, it seems everywhere I go, I keep picking up a piece, a piece of bulldog clothing here. I don't know. Well, how's the hat? You like it? Yeah, it's all right. You know, we have a lot of parents here, of course, proud of their kids watching the football game. We have some moms on either side of me. Your name? Charlotte Casarella. And who's your son? My son is AJ, number 81. Are you getting hoarse yet from all the screaming? Just about. <laughs> you guys must be so proud to see your kids out there. Yes, we are. We're proud of all of them. They're a great bunch of guys. They really are. All right. And over here, your name? Holly Mineta. And who's your son? Chris Mineta. What position? Yeah, tight end. I, I think the team's coming out on the field now, so we're going to go back to cheering for the guys, OK? Back to you, Joe and Paul. OK, thanks, Karen. The dogs are certainly coming out on the field. I'll tell you what, some people always ask the question, well, how do these teams do? What do they do to get here to the PIAA state playoffs? Well, if we can take a look at how Berwick got here, first of all, you see they beat Nanakoke 41 to 7. They also defeated Coughlin by a score of 41 to nothing. 49 to nothing over Hazelwood, 41 to 7 over Wyoming area, four, four games, 40 points or more. And then they won out 28-7 over Mount Carmel, 20 to nothing over Tunkanic. 48-6 over Pottsville. Blank Shikalemi, 47-0. Also shut out Pittston, 27-0. 35-14 over Wyoming Valley West and 45-7 over Shimokin. And then, of course, in the Eastern Conference playoffs, it was 27-6 over North Pocono. And then the final, 42-14 over Pottsville. So eight games, Joe. The Bulldogs scored 40 points or more. And if that isn't impressive, I don't know what is. Well, there's no question that they can move the ball, but uh, they're uh, up against a little tougher kind of a team than they have uh, met this year in the Wyoming Valley Conference. There's no question that Middletown is a class team and quite a representative, as you see what they have done this year. And as the Middletown team now comes back out on the field, I thought maybe they were going to a different site to play the second half. This has been the longest halftime in the history of uh, high school football. But uh, they started off with uh, four straight wins. Bishop McDevitt, 22-14. Central Dolphin, 22-8. Lower Dolphin, 34-14. And uh, Palmyra, they beat 27-6. Then in Redland, they lost 14-12. Their only loss, Redland is a quad A school, by the way, and uh, a champion. Uh, then they went on and they, they reeled off all those wins over uh, Northern Hershey, Mechanicsburg, Milton Hershey, Steelton uh, Hill High Spire, East Pennsboro, Juniata, and Mannheim Central just last week to get here to the state playoffs. You're right, a long, so uh, first half, or rather half time in the locker room. I imagine the coaches probably went over every play in the book saying, look out boys, if we go home losers, we put the uniforms away till next year. So let's pull out, pull out all the stops. George Curry, there he is on the sidelines, the head bulldog and his team. It's a beautiful sunlit day and the wind still striking out at about 15 to 20 miles per hour but it has not affected the playing here on Bethlehem Community Stadium. They are grouped together there in the far end zone, the Berwick Bulldogs. About 6,000 on hand, we told you, and the stadium seats some 13,000 with enough room for 15,000, including the standees. And the difference in the game right now, the run by Kelchner, trying to pass it, nobody open, great move here, beats two, three more people and goes into the end zone, just gets the ball on the goal line for the touchdown that has given Berwick the 10-6 lead, and Middletown does have a touchdown, but the extra point was blocked, and that could be an important extra point. And by the way, in high school football, state playoff variety, they do play an overtime period, and if it comes to that, we'll explain the rather interesting overtime. And a lot of people will be surprised how this game will be decided if indeed it is played overtime. Our statistician Mike Chalko also points out that there's another, another interesting stat. In third down conversions, Middletown is only two of seven, while Berwick, four out of five times they've made that first down, converting the third down. And the field possession, well, that's been a big factor. Middletown, only at their own 29-yard line, while the field possession for Berwick has been at the 50. Now, as you know, Berwick kicked off to start the game, so they will have the edge here in the second half as they will be fielding the kick from Middletown. Well, neither team has been able to move the ball really offensively except for one or two big plays 
And I would suspect again that Berwick will come out and try to throw the ball now because I think uh, the Lions have dominated the running part of this football game. Well, there you see the meeting of the, we sometimes say captains, co-captains, tri-captains, but that's quad captains, four on each side. And they'll shake hands and come up for the second half of the game. 10 to 6, Berwick leading. And we certainly hope you're enjoying this exclusive sports presentation right here on WNEP-TV. And again, a reminder, if Berwick wins here, we'll be joining you from beautiful Hershey Stadium. Next Saturday afternoon, kickoff time is set for one, and that will be the winner of the bradford Aliquippa game. And most people, Joe, favoring Aliquippa, and pretty good company has come out of that school, the likes of Mike Ditka and Tony Dorsett. Next Saturday, if Berwick wins today, we will be there. If Berwick loses, well, we'll concentrate on basketball and wrestling right away. <laughs> yes, and speaking of basketball, we'll be joining the Louisville-Indiana game following this game, and another half of the doubleheader features the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and Kentucky. A sports-filled afternoon here on WNEP. So they'll get set to kick off. It'll be Eugene Lakin. The man who kick off for the Blue Raiders, Joe Keltner, Avina, back deep. There is Lance Avina. What a fantastic first half he's had. Catching the passes and tipping a punt. And the kick, high end over end kick. Avina looks into the sun, garners it in at the 9 to the 10, to the 15, the 20. Heads for the sideline, to the 25, and roll down. Is there a fumble on the play? It is Middletown's ball. What a turn of events to start the second half. Well, if there's one way to get Middletown back into the lead is to give him the ball to the 28-yard line. Well, you know that Coach Dennis Etsy in that locker room, Joe, says, I want to see you guys go out there and arm tackle. Well, he's got a nice little run here, and then all of a sudden you watch him get hit as he tries to make the move outside. It's the hit from behind that breaks the ball open right there. He's hit from behind, and that's a fumble, and that's Berwick's first turnover in the football game. First and 10 at the 29-yard line. Chad there to Scott Everly, and he's handcuffed. Not one, not two, but three Bulldogs bring him down. Well, somebody said to the Berwick defense, guess what, guys? We got to do it again, and here they come out doing it. Middletown, of course, with the advantage now, at least the opportunity to put the ball into the end zone and take a lead. Forward progress gives him about a half a yard. We'll call it second and nine from the 27-yard line. The Blue Raiders in command after the Berwick fumble by Lance Savina. Full house backfield now, the old Notre Dame backfield as Chad Deere gets set to work. And this time he wants to pass, he looks incomplete. Avina covering the receiver on the play, and that was Mike Zuby. And it's actually fortunate for Middletown that that ball was overthrown because Avina was closing and actually had his sights set on an interception. So it'll still stay third and long. At the 27-yard line. Wide receiver to the right side. Single running back and the Delaware wing tee. And that is Souter, or rather Dagan in motion. He looks, throws over the middle. It's cut by Everly, a one-handed stab at the 10-yard line. And a first down for the Blue Raiders. A little play action that time, Paul. You'll watch, he fakes the run up the middle, then starts to go outside, pulls up, and throws it. Watch, watch now, here's the fake up the middle. Looks like he might still run, pulls up, and then throws a beautiful pass right over the middle. Look at that catch. This kid has really made two one-headed catches in this game, and he has made two big, big plays. First and goal from the 10-yard line. Berwick leading 10 to 6, but the Blue Raiders threatening here early on in the third period. There gives to the last man through. This is Everly, but he has nowhere to go but down. Everly on the carry. Yuhi, Rollin Yuhi for Berwick came in and shut that play down for the loss. So it'll be second and goal, but this time from the 12-yard line. A big play, but now all of a sudden the Berwick defense is rising to the occasion. Rusty Keating split wide to the left side. Single setback for the offense. Man in motion. Fakes the give. Durr looks to throw. He's in trouble. He finds open room. He's to the five. He's to the two. He's in for the touchdown. No indication. Now it is. There it is. 
and the Blue Raiders take the lead here early in the third period. Wow, have we seen some great quarterback play in this football game? He does this one all by himself. The Berwick defense has got him dropped for a loss. He bounces off the tackle and goes in all by himself for the touchdown. Chad Deere scores his sixth rushing touchdown of the now year. Watch. Berwick's got him in the backfield right here. He stopped. That's a loss. He breaks out of that one, then takes it himself into the end zone for the touchdown. Now the extra point drive. And they're going to go for two. Chad Deere will hit the dirt once again. So they have missed on both conversions here this afternoon. One on the point after, and now on the two-point three. So the score here is just a two-point difference. Middletown 12, Berwick 10. We'll be back with more football action in a moment. Please hurry. My husband needs help. Hurry, please. When we got to the emergency room, I didn't think Bob was going to make it. I've never seen doctors and nurses work so fast or care so much. Thanks to them, my Bob is back home with me again. The Berwick Hospital Center, the first choice when seconds count. At Browns and Berwick, we're asking you not to purchase a new or used car or truck until you see us. Why? Because we will do anything possible to put you in a new or used vehicle at a price you can afford. At Browns, you can select from the complete GM line, Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, and Cadillac. We're also your Mercedes-Benz headquarters with every model and option available. So don't make your new or used car or truck purchase until you see us at Browns in Berwick. And remember, you can buy a brown car or truck in any color. The dogs trailing by two, 12 to 10. Here's Kleinfelder's kick. Deep are Avina and Kelchner. It'll go Avina again. Last time he fumbled. He's to the 20, the 25, and upended at the 20. Seven yard line. And the Middletown crowd has gotten itself into this football game. They are really fired up over there now. And they're looking for the defense to make a big stand. Teams from both cities shadowed by nuclear power plants. Middletown shadowed by Three Mile Island. And of course, the Berkwick nuclear plant. Some folks try to call this the power plant bowl. There's a lot of power for sure. I don't think any of it has to do with nuclear. All right, let's see what the dogs can do. They trail by two, 12 to 10, first and 10 from their own 27-yard line. Single setback is Dave yeah. Force. They give to Force, but the whistles blow, blow the play dead. I think, again, you're going to have encroachment on the defense. Again, Berwick jumping around, jumping the count a little bit. In the third quarter, it's Cedar Cliff 24, and Shamini nothing. And that's the call offsides against the defense. And pretty soon they're going to get that one figured out. That's three times. Well, if you're interested in that quad A game in the third quarter, Cedar Cliff is leading the Chamonix 24 to nothing. A shutout going there, but not here. All right, it'll be first and five for the Bulldogs. They're at the 33-yard line. Kelchner in command with Lynn, Frank, and Silvers in the backfield. Fix this way and the cross block. This is going to be Charlie Lane, I do believe. Fake one way, give the other way. It's Frank, Dante Frank, who rushed for 1,099 yards this year. Brings him out for a first down. And Frank comes up a little bit with a limp, and you watch him just right up over the middle. Just great blocking by the Berwick offensive line. Frank missed a few games this year and still rushed for 1,100 yards, so you get the idea what kind of a runner he is. 17 touchdowns for Dante Frank. First and 10 at the 45-yard line. 12 to 10, Berwick trailing by two. They shift out. It's Lynn in the backfield now, and this time the give is to Lynn. Slides off left tackle between Jason Slusser and Tom Robsock. The front line for the Bulldogs, Avina, Slusser, Robsock, Kachurka, DePippa, what a captain he is. Bowman and Woodishick. Defensively for Middletown, the up front four guys. And you can get an idea of just how that wind is blowing down there on the field as the cheerleader's hair is uh, blowing in the wind. Second and eight for Berwick at the 48. Kelchner 
Well, don't, won't know whether that was a boxed up play, but it ends up that way anyway as he take a huge loss all the way inside the 40-yard line to about the market at the 40. That, was, that looked like a busted play for sure. Kelchner was trying to hand off or at least fake the handoff, but there was nobody there. Now watch. That play was not designed to go that way. And that's the third sack by the Middletown defense on Jake Kelchner. It'll bring up a third and 15. Big play here for Berwick. Time to, for Kelchner to crank up and hit the air. In motion goes his brother Joel to the top of your screen. What's up? What's up? What's up? Kelchner back to pass, looks over the field. He's got Avina at the 42, but he gets nowhere as he's decked at the 44-yard line quickly by Scott Everly, number 12, coming up from his safety position. And Biesecker in there also as they double continue to double cover him. That's a short four-yard gain, and Berwick now will have to punt for the first time in the football game. No, not the first time. Second time for Joe Kelchner. He'll be kicking from his own 35. I knew it wasn't a whole lot of times. And Mike Dagan will be back in single safety. Let's see if they put the rush on now. There's the linebacker moving. The rush is on. They're pinching in, but Kelchner gets the kick away over the head of the intended receiver, and it gets a good Berwick roll inside the 10 to about the 8-yard line. So there's a break in the action here at Bethlehem Community Stadium to score. Berwick 12, Middletown 10, more coming up in a moment. There's a surprise waiting for your kids at Burger King. What do you think it could be? Bucket rainbow. Fireflies. It's something soft and comfortable. It's the pretenders. Four furry cats who pretend to be a dog, a duck, a mouse, and a bunny. See? It's a cat. Let's get one for Susie. No, that is a mouse. And now it transforms into a cat again. Meow. Quack, 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 quack. Pretenders. Collect all four pretenders, $1.99 each, now at Burger King. We started out as a little old bank. But as your needs got bigger, so did we. And we're still growing. And we want you to know that today, we can serve every single financial need that you and your family have. But we also want you to know this. We'll never get so big that you can't get close to us. The First National Bank of Berwick, a community bank where customer service is the top priority for all your financial services. And as we're back live at the state championship game, Triple-A, there's the double-A game right now. Fourth quarter, Bethlehem Catholic, the number two team in the Super 16, leading West York, 9 nothing. Well, not bad of a punt by Joe Kelchner on that last play, 57 yards, and the Blue Raiders are inside the 10-yard line with a first and 10 from the 8-yard line. Chad Durr slips it off to his tailback. He's on the move. This is Scott Everly. They call him the road runner. Well, Everly is almost single-handedly, I mean, that's the word, too, single-handed. He's made two fine catches on big plays. He definitely is the key player for this Middletown offense. And he comes from a football family. His father, Terry, was a small college little All-American at Westchester. As you take a look at Everly. He's just an outstanding player. Well, three tackles on that one. He runs over and around you. Again, Everly, this time he's hit inside the line at about the 20-yard line. So Souders, who is the fullback, has not got his hands on the ball quite often here in the third quarter. This it's is, been all Everly. This is really an important test here for the Berwick defense. You want to hold Middletown down at this end of the field, stop them for sure from scoring, and hopefully stop them down here so that Middletown is forced to punt and Berwick's offense can take, a, take over good field position. It's second and nine for Middletown at their own 20-yard line. Five minutes to go in the third period. They lead by two, 12 to 10. In motion goes Dagan. Chad Durr is back to pass. Throws over the middle. He's got Everly at the 40. And Everly is twin tackled down at the 45-yard line. It's a one-man show. Scott Everly. Well, you got to give this quarterback to a lot of credit. This is a well-designed play, and they execute it perfectly. And Everly is just having a fantastic book. I mean, he is just dominating right now. The Berwick people cannot stay with him. Berwick has dished a lot of this one-man show out this year. Now they're getting a little bit of a shift with them. Out of the huddle they come. Double wide receivers at the top of your screen, and this is going to be the handoff. 
and this is Scott Souders getting the ball, but the Berwick defense rallies to nail him in his own backfield. Yeah, Berwick's doing a good job on 10 of the guys, there's no question about it, but Everly has really become the big play player for them, just as Avina has for Berwick all year long. And there you saw that defense of Yohe, Slusser, Donnelly, Ropsock, Hanger, linebackers, Force, and Coach. Secondary, Silvers, Ketchner, Avina, and Coach. Second and 10 at the 45-yard line for the Blue Raiders of Middletown. In motion goes Dagan. He gets the handoff. He's got a lot of room. He's to the 50, crosses the 50, and spills down at the 47-yard line. Well, there's no question that this drive is becoming very important to Middletown. They're reading up the clock. There's only three minutes and 50 seconds left that they can finish this off with a touchdown. Berwick would have to come back and score twice, and they're not, not, they have not been able to put together any long scoring drive so far in the, in the second half. Berwick has never trailed in a football game this year, but they've trailed here twice and are trailing now. Third and one for the Blue Raiders at the 47-yard line. It is Scott Everly. He will not make the first down. He is ankle tackled. Tackle there by Joe Donnelly. He has 66 tackles this year, 26 assists, 17 sacks of the quarterback, and his cousin is a member of our crew down there, Jim Donnelly. Well, I'll tell you what, that was just as big a football play in this game as there could be, because that has put Middletown now into punt formation on a fourth down and more than one. Troy Hamilton will boot it away to either Avina or Kelchner. Spiral kick to Avina, backs him up to the eight-yard line, tries to pick his way to the 10, to the 15, and then piled on at the 12-yard line. So Berwick in not too good of a field position here in the second half as they've enjoyed in the first half when they were starting in and around their 48, 49, or 50-yard line. They're deep inside the 15-yard line with a first and 10 and two minutes and 44 seconds remaining. Well, exactly, with that much time left, in the third quarter and the whole fourth quarter to go yet i would think that berwick has got to try to get the ball to somebody other than avina they have really been keen on him they have not gotten the ball to him with much success and now they've got to work some other people all right jake kelchner the field general the super shooter out there gets set to work blocks the signal gets the snap from kachurko and the handoff is to frank dante frank struggles for a few more yards out across the 15 to about the 17 yard line well, they faked the little pitch that time to the outside man, and then a quick handoff inside, picked up a four yards. Second and six. A perfect sunlit day for a championship game as you see Dante Frank on yeah. the carry. Yep. Fakes it outside, and then Frank over the middle. Silvers flanked to the left, twin setbacks in running position. Kelchner now with a second and six gives to the last man through. Dante Frank collared around the neck that time. Well, that is going to set Berwick up in a big third down and two yards. So they all of a sudden has shut down their air game and are going to the ground game. And so what do you do now on third and two? You know those little those little cross traps have been working pretty well for them. They've been getting two, three yards on that. Don't be surprised if they try to bring Frank again, maybe off tackle and pick up a first down. Well, Gary Frank, number 25, is into the ball game along with Joe Kelchner. And they shift out now. Dave Force is number 99, the lone backfield member there, either for running the ball or for blocking. They'll give it to him, and he is stacked up by number 51, Greg Zimmerman, probably the biggest hit of the ball game, Joe. Wow. He Zimmerman just wasn't pulled on that play at all. He was standing there in the hole. And again, Berwick had hoped to go right up over tackle, pick up two or three yards for the first down, and Zimmerman said, uh-uh. Well, they're going to take a timeout with 44 seconds remaining and a big fourth down and two, and I don't think Curry would be in a, in a gambling mood right here. All right, down on the sidelines, Tim Carlson. Well, Joe and uh, Paul, the one observation I'll make with uh, about 44 seconds to go here in the third quarter. I've been to several Berwick practices this year, and the one thing that Coach Curry stresses all the time is conditioning, conditioning. He always says to his kids, it's the fourth quarter. It's the fourth quarter. you got to be ready for the fourth quarter. In a ball game like this, I think this is going to come into play more than any other time this year. We'll have to see if Berwick is in condition to play with Middletown, who seems like a real rough team. Guys? 
Well, it could be a bad omen for Middletown. Their fullback and middle linebacker Scott Souders limped off the field, so whether he'll come back remains to be seen. Ready to punt it on fourth and two. Or fake. Long snap, hoping that they were drawn up, but they don't get it. Joe Kelchner, long to Dagan. Dagan fields it at the 46-yard line, goes laterally, and is going to be run down. But he's a hard man to bring down the pint-sized wingback struggling to keep his feet. Well, it's going to be Middletown's ball at about the 47-yard line. That's a pretty good punt, actually. And this time, Middletown decided to field the ball. The previous two punts, they sort of let the ball sail over the head, and it banged down into the uh, deep end of the field. Well, this time, they end up in good field position at their own 48-yard line. And one play will probably run out the third quarter with the score Berwick, or rather, Berwick trailing by two, 12 to 10. The Blue Raiders, who were kind of stalemated in the first half, coming out in explosive style here in the third period. The handoff on the end around, the wing back is sliced down. That is Mike Dagan. Number 99, Dave Force in on the action. And that is the end of the third period, so we've gone through three with one more quarter to go to score. Berwick trailing by 2-12 to come to Middletown. We'll be back with fourth quarter action from Bethlehem in a moment. It's Christmas is for kids. Hess makes kids of you and me a truck and race car by the tree. We all come to play from near and far. Uncle plays with all the lights. Cousin Mike sees racing stripes. And Grandma revs the motor on the car. This time of year, we all turn into kids. The Hess Truck and Race Car, $6.95. Happy holidays from Hess. Please hurry. My husband needs help. Hurry, please. When we got to the emergency room, I didn't think Bob was going to make it. I've never seen doctors and nurses work so fast or care so much. Thanks to them, my Bob is back home with me again. The Berwick Hospital Center, the first choice when seconds count. Well, Joe, it's a position that George Curry or the Bulldogs haven't faced all year long, trailing in the fourth period. Well, good football teams don't worry too much about that. If they're a good football team, well, we know they are. You come up, you meet the challenge. It just depends now on who makes the big play. Middletown or Berwick, it will come down to that. And in 12 minutes, somebody's football season will be over. So it'll be second and 12 from the 45-yard line as the Blue Raiders get ready to crack open quarter number four. Durr wants to go to the air. This time, Everly tries to one-handed, but it is no good. He's that, made two one-handed catches this It's afternoon. almost like his hand is tied to his side on these plays. That's the third time he's tried the one-hand one. This time, he doesn't make the play. Actually, what's happening is the quarterback is really leading him so that the ball isn't being, doesn't have a chance to be picked off. Here we go with Durr looking. Sees no receivers open. He's going to run. 50, 40. Durr is clipped at the ankles by Force and a penalty marker's down as Force. There's force no, is Durr down at the 37. There's no question about it. That's just piling on. Personal foul on that play. They'll tack 15 yards onto that play. What a great, what a great offensive play by the quarterback there. Well, he's been. Uh, in the limelight here in the third quarter with his scrambling when he couldn't, can't find the receiver, he's been getting the big gain as he's watching him right here. Berwick over commits. Now watch the Berwick players. A couple of these guys are standing back waiting for him to come to him right here. Nice move there. Now you're going to see it. He's down and boom, that is a flag personal foul. No doubt about it. So the Blue Raiders in good position with a first and 10 at the Bulldog 20 yard line. They trail by two and they're looking for insurance points right here. Wide to the left side, Rusty Keating. And Scott Souders, who was injured earlier, is back in the backfield. And it's going to be Everly. Everly skirts. Or they call him the road runner, and now I know why. That kid can run on roads, on grass, on anything he wants. He is a good one. 
And he's getting some nice blocking up there, too. Believe me, there are some holes now being opened up. It looks like, you know, the fourth quarter is Berwick's big quarter. In fact, when the, when the fourth quarter started, all the seniors on Berwick raised up the four fingers indicating fourth quarter. Well, right now, it looks to me like that Middletown line is in control of the game. Second and five at the 15-yard line. Chad Durr to Everly again. Tries to keep his balance. Is inside the 15 to about the 13. That's going to bring up a third down and short yardage for Middletown. Third and about a yard and a half. We're in the fourth period. Everly, 12 carries, 29 yards. And they're going to call timeout as the Blue Raiders are going to talk this one over to see if they can pick up the first down on the third down play. Well, I don't think you're going to see a more crucial play than this one. Third down, a short two yards. Middletown needs it to keep the drive alive and to put more points on the board. All right, we're at 12-10, Middletown over Berwick. Ten minutes left to go. We'll be right back. Mrs. T's Pierogies presents the great side dish trade-in. I had him mashed, I had him hashed. Boring potatoes should be stashed. Hi, Mrs. T's Pierogies. Stuff the stuffing. This is Teens Pierogies are perfect. Rice is nice, but I need some spice. I'm fed up with french fries. This is Teens Pierogies have good taste. America's next great side dish is hiding in your grocer's freezer. No more noodles. There are plenty of old ways to have fun in the snow. Cool. But only one new way. Introducing Snow Scoop by Yamaha. It's fun to ride, simple to handle, and easy to afford. Buy a snow scoot before December 31st. There's no down payment and no payments for 90 days. There's the old way or the new way. Snow scoot by Yamaha. Consult your yellow pages for the Yamaha dealer nearest you. There's your score. A big play now for Middletown third and about two at the Bulldog. 13-yard line. Full house backfield. Chad Deere. Penalty markers are down. Souter got the carry. And let's see if it's going to be an illegal procedure. That'll, well, that'll change the complex of this play in a huge way. Instead of third and two, it's third and seven. It is procedure. And they've had just enough of those today to make this football game a lot tougher on themselves. Now they're looking at a third down and seven. And they have sent another play in, so whatever they were going to try on third and two, they're not going to try on third and seven. Todd Kleinfelder, the receiver, comes into the lineup. He'll line up at split end. The ball resting at about the 19-yard line. Chad Durr, 5'7", 160-pound senior quarterback, directing the attack. And Durr wants to go to the air for all of it. He's got blockers, but he'll not make it. He spins, he throws! Was he behind the line of scrimmage? He threw it from behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a penalty, but the pass is incomplete. There's a flag down, and I think you're probably going to get some, at least some illegal people downfield, if anything. Yeah, now watch. Berwick defense, again, has got this play covered nicely. Now, Darren doesn't know what to do. He wants to run. He knows he's not going to get it. Wants the first. Pulls up and throws the pass, but he's already been over the line of scrimmage, and that, of course, is a no-no. And Berwick now will have an option. And it will be interesting to see what Coach George Curry decides to do. You decline the penalty, and you make them probably try to kick a field goal. And we watched in practice, and the field goal kicker, Kleinfelter, was kicking them from 35 and 40 yards away. Of course, there weren't a lot of Berwick Bulldogs in his face when he tried those. But he has been accurate from that range. And Kleinfelter, the kicker, in the, the only loss that wow. Middletown had, 14 to 12. Look at this. Look what they're going to do. They're going to give Middletown another chance to make a first down instead of making them kick the field goal from a little bit closer. It'll bring up a fourth and 11. So there is no, it is a loss of down on the play. It is a loss of down, brings up fourth down. He's going to try a 40-yard field goal. Well, he did it in practice. Let's see what he can do now. Chad Durr, the quarterback, will hold. Kleinfelder, the sidewinder. You see the way he'll approach the ball. It has to travel 40 yards. The ball is down. They're going to fake it. 
Chad there rolling around looking for a receiver. Throws it down and it is almost picked off. In any case, it is still Berwick's ball. Well, Ber pick off or no pick off. Yeah, Berwick did not think for a moment they were going to try to kick that ball because they had everybody ready for the fake field goal attempt. And now, with 10 minutes left in the football game, it could come down to this. What? It's a high snap. But he's just picking the ball up and running. Now, this is the quarterback, Dare, who also holds. He's every intention here is to run. Berwick shuts it down on the outside, as you can see. His only option now is to try to pass. It's incomplete. The Berwick defense holds. And now, first down for Berwick with 10 minutes to go. All right, Jake Kelchner will try to spark some action into the offense now. Kelchner looks over the middle, fires to Avina, his favorite target, and he's got it at the 29-yard line. Lance Savina, his sixth catch of the afternoon, but not for much yardage. Well, they're doing the smart thing, at least coming out on first down. They're not panicking. They're not trying to throw the long ball, the bomb. They're coming out now in this first series with 10 minutes left, short plays, and they're going to see if they can drive down the field, maybe get the score, and also ice at the same time by running the clock down. Dante Frank is out. Joe Kelchner is in, the tight end. Kevin Woodishek is in, and here they go with a second down and about three. Wide to the right side, Lance Avina. They spread the offense now. Only one man in the backfield. Kelchner back to pass. Kelchner rolling. Kelchner looking, and he was slammed down at the 27-yard line. Nowhere to go on that play. Oh, he he was, took a beat. Yeah, he was really hit hard, but he's up quickly, and they're now looking at a third down. But what a great defensive play by Middletown. Nobody touched the right defensive end on that play. He came in all alone and he's looking past all the way but he's got no time to set up as you can see there's just no time at all to set up on that play strohecker comes in there and shuts it down he was all alone in the backfield that time with no help from any blockers so it is third down and six for the bulldogs trailing by a score of 12 to 10 we're in the fourth quarter brother joe hiking it up to the top of your screen jay kelton looking throws it is almost picked up but Sabina got it Navina to the 50-yard line, and the Bulldogs are in business. What a play that is. Oh, my, that's got touchdown the other way written all over. The great defensive play, almost defensive play, and this is a firm connection. Now, watch this. There's Avina. We've got the isolation on him. Now, the defense, Everly, is right on him. Everly is a great player in this game. Look at that through his hands. And what concentration by Avina to catch that ball and get a first down. You're looking at the two best football players in this game, one-on-one, -on -one, and that one goes to Avina. Everly made the mistake of going for the game sealer with the interception, but missed. First and 10 inside the 50-yard line. Frank in motion. The handoff is to Frank. Frank will be spilled in his own backfield. Three Blue Raiders bring him down. Dante Frank, the hard-running tailback, 185-pounder, but found nowhere, could not cut the corner. Now that's, the Middletown defense now is, is, is really shutting down the running game. Berwick is going to have to throw the ball, and it's become obvious that the only guy they're going to throw it to is Avina. Joe Kelchner, Charlie Lynn checks in. Silvers checks out along with Dante Frank, George Curry. Constantly shuffling players in and out of the ball game. It is second down and 12 for the Berwick Bulldogs. They trail by a score of 12 to 10. Joe Kelchner in motion and Jake Kelchner back to pass. He looks, he throws. Avina, it is almost intercepted and caught. Let's see what they're going to call here. There's also a flag down on this play, so either way, this is going to be a first down for Berwick. Well, we're seeing a circus now. Almost intercepted, dropped and caught by Avina. Let's see if the play holds. Watch it here. Watch the try for the interception here. There's Dagan. He's got it. It's in his hands. And look at this catch by Kelsner. He's now caught four passes. They've thrown to him four times. He's four of four in the second half. And the play is good. The ball spotted at the 33-yard line. First and 10 for the Bulldogs. Trying to rally from behind here in the fourth period and try to get their way to Hershey next week to or take on either Aliquippa or Bradford. If Middletown loses this game, they'll look back at these highlights and say almost, almost, almost seven minutes, 15 seconds left, the clock is running, and Berwick is driving. 
Well, we could see one of the most dramatic finishes of the year right here, and you're watching it live on WNEP. Jake Kelsner set to work. Rolls right, looking for the receiver, cocks his arm, but Jake Kelsner still not going down. He breaks away. Kelsner still on the move to the 30. Kelsner to the 25. Kelsner to the 20-yard line. It looked like it took him five minutes in that play. Well, I'll tell you what, if this is the NFL, it's a 12-yard loss for in the grass. But he breaks that tackle, and this is the condition he was talking about. Now watch Kelsner on this play. He's throwing there. He's sacked. He's down right here. Somehow he breaks away from this, and the rest of the way it's all met one-on-one. -on -one. He's got this guy beat. And again, the condition, he's coming into play. Look at the move there. Another one there, he breaks a tackle. And Kelsner, well, he turns that into a first down, and it was a five-yard loss. Well, Joe, we can't say what a good second effort because we would have forgotten about the third, the fourth, and the fifth effort on that run. All right, the Bulldogs in business at the 20-yard line of Middletown. They trail 12 to 10 here in the fourth period with 6-19 and movement on the line. Yeah, this time it's Berwick. I think Berwick got a little anxious on this one. The defense jumped, didn't make contact, didn't come across, and the Berwick offensive guard, I think on the right side, jumped a little soon. There's the referee, Jack Winters with the indication that Berwick indeed moved, so it'll be set back to the 25-yard line, and that'll make it first and 15. And in case you're thinking about field goal right now, which would be enough for Berwick, even if they spot it here, you're looking at a 40-yard field goal, so Berwick is going to have to move the ball. Lance Savina at the top of your screen, flank right, and the fake one way, the give to Dante Frank, and the hard plunging runner is inside the 20-yard line to the 19. Five minutes, 50 seconds left. This could be Berwick's last offensive series of the season. Second down and a long nine. And everybody here on the edge of their seats. Now check that one. Bethlehem Catholic beats West York 15 to nothing. They're in the final. They're playing for the state championship in double A next week. Well, I'm looking down at the Berwick fans below and they're all standing. They want to go home with a victory, and the Bulldogs can pull it off here on a second down and nine. Dante Frank with the ball, same play, gets a couple of more yards inside the 20 to about the 17-yard line. Well, it looks to me like Berwick is setting up for a field goal. That's two of them. They have run off tackle over the middle, trying to set that ball up in field goal position. So they've called timeout. They've got a big third down coming up here, and right now that ball is spotted on the 18-yard line at about 16 to that. That's a 34-yard attempt, and I sure would hate to have my entire season dependent on a high school kid making a 34-yard field goal. Well, a big photo finish here in this ball game, 12 to 10, but it is not over yet. Here's something you're not going to want to miss. This Wednesday at 8.30, WNEP TV 16 proud to present to you Newswatch 16 for our kids. WNEP TV 16 has gathered kids from all over northeastern and central Pennsylvania to play the role of news anchors, reporters, weather, and that's sports people. It's Newswatch 16 for our kids, by our kids. Some of these young, talented people just might wind up doing our job someday. Well, if you joined us late, Berwick leading 10 to 6 in the at the end of the half in the third quarter. Chad Durr ran 12 yards for the TD. They missed the two-point conversion, and Middletown led 12 to 10. Weinfelder tried a field goal later. That didn't work. But now the Bulldogs trailing by a score of 12 to 10, and they have a third and eight inside the 20-yard line. Kelsner puts Dante, the lone man, the lone setback. Kelchner tries to look for a flare pass. He flares it out to Dante. He's to the 20, to the 15, to the 10, and he is way laid out of bounds inside the 10-yard line, somewhere near the 9. And that, to me, if the mark is correct, is a first down for Berwick. First time we've seen this play today. A little flare pass to the back, Dante. Where they mark it is going to be so important here. They're looking closely at it. As you look, look, there's the little flare out to Frank. Now, Frank shows a lot of speed getting outside here. And he's just, he's got one thing in mind now, the first down marker. 
and they just push him out. Look at this, right at the marker, and the officials are looking at the mark. It's either going to be first down, and it is. First down, Berwick inside the 10-yard line. Well, Kelsner has thrown five passes, has completed five passes for 58 yards, but that one the key one with five minutes and six seconds remaining, and it's first and goal just inside the 10. You see the football spot. Well, I don't know how many more big plays are left in this drive, but with 10 yards left to go, they may come up with two or three more. All right, hang on to your seats. Here we go. First and goal to go. Five minutes remaining. Bulldogs trailing by two, 12 to 10. There's a fake one way, and the play is stacked up right on the line of scrimmage. Well, we knew they would figure that one out pretty soon, and they sure did. Now they, of course, they are in field goal range, but again, Berwick has only tried, I think, three field goals this year. They are not well practiced at it, at least under game situations. They are thinking touchdown all the way. All right, everybody here on the field with one eye on the field, one eye on the clock. The clock shows 440 remaining. The ball just outside the 10-yard line. It'll still be second and goal. Here they come out of the huddle. Kelsner with the last-minute word with his backfield man. Now steps over his center. Troy Kachurka ready for the snap. Defense moving, but not over the line. And they give to the middle man. This is Dante inside the five. Down to about the two-yard line. Dante Frank, who was very, very quiet in the first half, but here in this fourth quarter, he's been the man of the hour. Oh, he's, he's been playing hurt this year. There's no question. And this, the Berwick offensive line just opens up, explodes off the ball here, and opens up that hole for a big nine-yard game. And now Berwick is looking at third down, one and a half yards to go for the touchdown. And George Curry will trot out on the field. He wants to make sure that there's not going to be any bosh up of a play here because this is all the marbles. They've won 13, but if they lose this one, the season is all over. They want to make it number 14. Watch Dante Frank. Again, the little first to fake and then the explosion, and Frank just blows through there on the on the on that Strohecker who had the initial contact, takes it down to the one and a half yard line. So Berwick is less than two yards away from the lead with three minutes and 50 seconds left to go. And there's a good view of a jet coming out of Allentown Eastern Airport. Let's go down for Timmy's reaction. Tim Carlson, what do you think? Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I want to go back to what I talked about a few minutes ago. I don't want to harp about it, but this is the situation where the conditioning comes in. These guys right now, it looks as if Berwick may be having the upper hand as far as the offensive line goes. I think Coach Curry is probably going to try two plays to punch it in for the touchdown. The field goal, it gives uh, the other team too much of a chance to come back and maybe win this ball game a little easier than if they would have to score a touchdown. So let's see what happens with the conditioning factor here late in the fourth quarter and Berwick just two yards away from taking the lead and maybe going to face Aliquippa next week. Guys? Well, Dante Frank has been the bread and butter guy here in the fourth period. Let's see if he's the man of the hour now. Third and goal at the two-yard line. Kelsner has Frank at the tip of the eye. He tries to sneak it in and he does. The Bulldog lead. Nothing fancy about it. Straight ahead. Over the offensive line. Over those big guards. Wolfsock. Kishurka. DePippa. Kelsner just follows them into the end zone for the touchdown. Watch this. Berwick offensive line just blasts ahead. Kelsner follows them in for the touchdown that has given Berwick a 16-12 lead with three minutes and 49 seconds left. And the winner of this game takes on either Aliquippa or Bradford, as we mentioned earlier. That game in Hershey next Saturday at 1 o'clock. If Berwick hangs on to this win, we'll be there. All right, they're going for the two-point conversion now. 16 to 10. They want to make to 12, rather. They want to make it 18. And Kelsner fires and is batted down by Ernest Fultz. And the conversion is met. So here, with three minutes and 49 seconds left to go in the Eastern Final, the Berwick Bulldogs 16 and the Blue Raiders of Middletown 12 will return in a moment. We started out as a little old bank, but as your needs got bigger, so did we. And we're still growing. And we want you to know that today, 
we can serve every single financial need that you and your family have. But we also want you to know this. We'll never get so big that you can't get close to us. The First National Bank of Berwick, a community bank where customer service is the top priority for all your financial services. At Browns and Berwick, we're asking you not to purchase a new or used car or truck until you see us. Why? Because we will do anything possible to put you in a new or used vehicle at a price you can afford. At Browns, you can select from the complete GM line, Chevrolet, Pontiac, Oldsmobile, Buick, and Cadillac. We're also your Mercedes-Benz headquarters with every model and option available. So don't make your new or used car or truck purchase until you see us at Browns and Berwick. And remember, you can buy a brown car or truck in any color. There's Bo Payne ready to boot it off. Number 65, deeper, Durr, Dagan, and Everly. Three speedsters back there to receive the kick. It'll be Everly at the 10-yard line. He's to the 15 to the 20-yard line, and Everly hits the middle and gets down at the 27-yard line. Well, it's come down to this. Berwick's defense, if they hold, they win. If they don't, they go home for the year. What a classic, classic drive. 11 plays, 73 yards. They ate up seven minutes on the clock with that go-ahead touchdown. And boy, there's a team gets behind, gets in trouble, and comes back to take the lead. All right, let's see what the Blue Raiders can do. First and 10 at the 27-yard line. Bulldogs have two. Here's the reverse. This is to Dagan. Dagan to the 30, the 35, and Dagan at the 41-yard line. Another trick play pulled out of the bag by Coach Dennis Eats. Well, you've got to believe now that Berwick is probably playing a little soft. They don't want to give up anything behind them. They definitely don't want that Everly kid to beat them. So they're probably going to be a little soft on defense. What they really need to do now is just dominate. And keep in mind, if they do get into field goal range, it doesn't count because they trail by four, 16 to 12. Durr looks over the field of receivers. It is picked off by Berwick. Picked off to the 45, to the 40-yard line, to the 30, to the 25, to the 20. And Gene Silver. nothing fancy about this this ball is just overthrown and what a great play and you don't think he wants to win this one and of course who do you think they're going to there they're going to the kid who's made it happen all year Everly but this time it's short and Silvers steps in front and he almost takes this one all the way to the end zone a 47 yard return after the pickoff by Gene Silvers the cornerback and the Bulldogs with still plenty of time to add another touchdown Dave Fort fouls off the right side, is inside the 10-yard line. And now, Joe, the defense of the Blue Raiders probably saying, my, my, we had it, we lost it, we had it, and now we're losing it. Well, Middletown, all game, they've been going to Everly. It's been successful, and to be honest with you, a good pass makes that a touchdown. Exactly two minutes to go in the ball game. Berwick leading by a score of 16 to 12, and they're threatening for more. And the Middletown fans, I believe, have seen the end of their football season. At least they think so, because they're on their way out of the stadium. Second down and six. They can pick up a first down inside the five-yard line. It'll be a quarterback sneak by Kelchner. And apparently the Blue Raiders with no timeouts remaining. Two more timeouts. Do you think they stop the clock right here? It's going down to the one minute and 25 second mark. Third down. And about two. They can make a first down at the four yard line if indeed they need it as the Berwick cheerleaders. A hooting and hollering here at Bethlehem Community Stadium. See their team come be from behind twice in the ball game and now try to seal it off and head for a big victory parade in Berwick tonight. Third down, too much time, I believe, will be called against the Dogs. Yep, delay of the game. 57 seconds left to go. Berwick now, if they make a first down, the football game is over. If they don't make a first down, they kick a field goal and make Middletown drive for the winning score.
last minute decisions being made here by the Bulldogs as well as the defense of well, if the Bulldogs win here, they'll be the first team to win 14 games without losing. And we'll be hoping for number 15 next Saturday. The handoff is going to be to the end of round. And he is clipped. Lance Savina. That's the first time we saw that play. They've used it quite considerably during the year, but Lance Savina is nailed at the 11-yard line, and Middletown uses up one of their timeouts. With 48 seconds left now. Middletown has called a timeout. They will get the ball back. It's just a question of whether Berwick will try a field goal or will try to go for the touchdown. Actually, you go for the TD down here. If you don't make it, that means that Middletown's got to drive 89 yards to beat you. I would suspect that Berwick will not take a chance on a field goal here. They will not take a chance on having it blocked. They're going to just probably run the ball, maybe try to get it in the end zone. And if they fail, they will say to Middletown, you got 49 seconds to beat us. See ya. And coming up right after our game here in Bethlehem, it's basketball action on the college scene. Louisville and Indiana in the first game of the doubleheader. That game already in progress. And it'll be followed by the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame taking on the Wildcats of Kentucky. What a sports day. And what a day we've had here at Bethlehem Community Stadium. Well over 6,000 fans, partisan fans from Berwick here. They outnumber the Middletown fans. They've had a great day. They have to wait 48 seconds before they can bring out the victory cry. And I imagine some people will be parading around Berwick right after this one's over. Here it is, fourth down. They're going to go for it. And about eight. Kelsner puts his brother Joe in motion, and Kelsner wants to go to the air, or can he run? He's looking, looking, throwing. And over to Avina, but over his head out of reach. And now, Middletown with 43 seconds. Have you heard the old phrase, Joe? Can miracles happen? I've heard that one. I've also heard this one, which I'm going to make up. It ain't over till the chocolate lady sings, bring on Hershey. All right. Ala Clippa over Bradford. 56 to 16, and that's what Berwick has to look forward to if they hold on here. Alec Whitler. Durr throwing over the middle, but bounces it into the dirt in front of the receiver, Mike Dagan. Clock stops now with 38 seconds, and a second down will be coming up. Alec Whippa, 56 to 12 over Bradford. My, my, what a game that will be next Saturday afternoon. I'm going out on a limb here and think that they're going to probably try to go to Everly. Yep, they've got to go to the long man who's made two one-handed catches so far this afternoon. Skirting around, Chad Durr tries to eat the football. He's still on a roll. Chad Durr can still throw the ball, and he's using up the clock. It's 28 seconds. He'll try to get out of bounds. The ball is fumbled out of bounds, and that'll stop the clock yeah. at 22 seconds. Yeah, it was fumbled out of bounds, all right. That's a great play by Durr. If he fumbles it out of bounds, it stops the clock. Otherwise, he's tackled there, and the clock continues to run. Now we're going to see yeah. the Hail Mary pass with 11 seconds. Yep. Well, stop the clock one more time. Well, they, had, they had to call the timeout, Paul. The referee ruled that he was down before that ball was fumbled out of bounds. And so they kept the clock going. They kept the clock going. Nine seconds left. We're going to Hershey next week, everybody. And take a look at the guys responsible for bringing you this game here today, live from Bethlehem Community Stadium. A great game, probably one of the best uh, championship games that we've had a chance to telecast in many years our cameraman and of course Rick Reinheimer Jeff Morena on the slow motion replays people back in the studio our engineering charge Frank Chabalo and the rest of the engineering staff all took apart and the man who's been buzzing our ears all afternoon Andy Kaley and man sitting right next to me Mike Chalko giving us all the stats so this is it. Kelsner with Eight seconds 10 left. of 17 in the, in the air for 115 yards. Seven for 30. Two touchdowns. Is the last play of the golf ball game, ladies and gentlemen. Chad Durr will go down, and the ball is loose. One second, and it's all over. Berwick goes on to the state championship next Saturday afternoon against Aliquippa at Hershey Stadium at 1 o'clock.